Hello everyone, I am Tiffany Starr and you are talking with Tiff. So for those that don't know, I stream every Wednesday through Friday here on Twitch. I also do a lot of TikTok content, um, lots of like sex positive, sex education, relationship, that kind of stuff. Um, Wednesdays on Twitch, I do a variety of games. Thursdays, we do the show every single week. And then Fridays uh, is kind of like multiplayer community day plus memes, YouTube videos, TikTok videos to end the night with. Uh, Jojo. Hello, everybody. Uh, Jojo West, Jojo West model on Instagram and Twitter, as you can see down there now. Um, I'm a variety streamer that has not been streaming lately. However, I just finished my class so i will be coming back to streaming soon um so i don't know about my schedule yet uh i uh what else oh yeah i i do like um other kinds of content sometimes so just keep an eye out for that too <laughs> <laughs> uh xc girl cross country girl yep hi so i'm xc girl 13 so our variation or you can just call me izzy if that's easier I stream She's very Friday. quiet. I'm going to up her volume. I'm in school and have a job, but so far it's been Monday, Friday, just chatting, and then Friday, me and a bunch of people just yelling at each other playing Apex. And yeah, that's about it. Well, thank you for being on, Kitten. Nico. Hello, hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I'm Nico Kitten Fox. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitch. Uh -huh. Nico Kitten Fox, <laughs> and then Twitter is Nico Kitten Fox with two X's. Hi. Sweet. Thank you for being on, Nico. Tiffany. Hi everyone. I am Tiffany Star. I'm also known as the Adult Entertainer Gamer. I play video games on Twitch, and it's not for kids to watch because I cuss a lot. Uh, anyways, I've been playing a lot of fun games lately. I've been playing The Messenger. I just beat Bloodstained: Curse of the Moon. And I'm going through a lot of different games. You should check me out on XXX, Tiffany underscore star XXX. Also, if you dig politics, my YouTube is just Tiffany Star. And I usually do a lot of fun politics there. But I'm not going to talk about that tonight. So <laughs> thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for being on. Uh, Tasha. Hi, um, I'm super happy to be here. I'm Tasha PNK. You can find me pretty much everywhere by the exact same name. Uh, I'm an adult content creator and uh, cam model, so I cam most uh, weekdays, and um, I do couple cam weekend evenings. I'm trying to stay a PG here, and uh, <laughs> I stream sporadically on Twitch, just uh, screaming at my sim people because that's what I like to play. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Denny. Uh, hello, everybody. I am Denisha. Hates you. Feel free to call me Denny. I'm a Twitch streamer and writer. I stream Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 3 p.m. PST to whenever I feel tired. Um, so you can always hit me up on there. And I also have an author's website, but we can talk about that after. Nice. Hell yeah. Uh, Alexandria. Uh, my name's Alex. You can find me on all my socials as Alexandria Rose uh, with one L. We joke around. Um, <laughs> I am a variety game content creator. Um, I love podcasts and stuff, so I'm trying to go on there more, and I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> so, oh, uh, yeah, I want to be on here more, so we'll see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, welcome on. Uh, Cloud Freckles. Hi, I'm Cloud. You can find me in Cloud Freckles on Twitter. I'm taking a break from Twitch until I finish school, but I'll be graduating in the spring and hopefully getting back into it. And I'm super happy to be back on again. Yeah, welcome back. We have some just quick getting to know you questions. It's real easy stuff uh if you could give your younger self a piece of advice about sex or relationships uh what would it be so thinking back what you've learned up to this point what advice would you give your younger self and anyone uh, can go uh we'll start with we'll say cross country uh, uh cool um, i guess <laughs> biggest advice would be just because older guys like you doesn't make you mature just makes you in my case an easy target for them nope, nope. i would agree Nico. Um, that you can, okay, it's going to be the same as last time, honestly, because it's so important that you can always say no, that if you're ever, ever, ever uncomfortable with any situation, that it doesn't make you a bad person for saying no. It makes you very cautious and it makes you smart. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tasha? I say go big or go home. 
if you like something, just freaking do it. And if the other person doesn't like it, too bad. Like, don't wait until you're 32 to be like, oh, I like this. This is fun. Damn, I should have been doing that this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Agreed. Uh, Tiffany. I mean, for me, it's obvious. I would tell my uh, younger self to transition earlier. I did transition fairly young, but... Uh... I could have done it much earlier and it would have benefited me and my sexual life as uh, I got older. All right. Jenny. Uh, I think I would just tell myself to stick to women. I, um, I started off like really into women and all of a sudden out of fucking nowhere, it just shifted to men. I, I would tell myself, don't, don't talk to that guy. Just stick with what you got. All right. All right, uh, Alex. Uh, I would say definitely compromise, but don't compromise yourself. Like you can, yes, you know, like just you know, compromise in a relationship, but don't change yourself so much that you're not you anymore. Mm -hmm. Especially if someone else isn't going to do it for you. See, the hard part is it happens so gradually over time that you don't even notice it. That's what I tell my <laughs> friends. It's hard to like have that line of. It of is. what's 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 like like you know i'm already freaking like all over the place but you know what i mean like what's the line that you draw for yourself where it's too yeah. much and something you need to do you know yep exactly uh clap records um that your sexuality is valid and no matter how many times your mom is gonna make you feel bad about it it's completely normal and you're gonna find your group of people that accept you for it yes Agreed. Uh, my advice, let your freak flag fly, people. Like, the amount of times that, that I was uh, shit. Oh, wait, I, is that her? Um, that I was, like, made to feel bad about even just wanting sex is ridiculous. Don't let anyone do that to you. Just, like, if you like it, do it. If you think you might like it, try it. Yeah. Yep. I have to agree a hundred times over on that one. Definitely. A hundred times. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Do you want to try everybody at the same time? Go ahead. Do it. Big girl, do it. You want five guys? Just do it. You want to fucking throw bananas at somebody? Do it. You want to stick bananas with your ass? Do it. Bananas? That sounds be like safe. an interesting one. I, I think I'm going to do that. that be life. safe and be ethical <laughs> about it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, bananas. Jojo, know that sounds good. Mm -hmm. I mean, bananas are oh. my thing, but you do you. <laughs> you know, no, that's something I saw in Foot Life, but Definitely, I would have done more of the freaky stuff when I was a bit younger. Definitely. <laughs> so what is your love language, JoJo? Uh, so I saw this really great meme that perfectly described it. If your love language is all of them, then you're probably into kink. I just want physical touch. That's it. Just... Yes, I know. You're a, you're a stage five clinger. <laughs> no. No, I'm a, I like, I like cuddling. <laughs> Imagine him like completely wrapped around. But somebody. I like my alone time. <laughs> like yeah, that's that. That's only during cuddle time, though. Like during cuddle, cuddle time, you, you just can't move. I'm wrapped around you. You're and like then... trying to drag your leg, and first feels like no, don't go. <laughs> I, I twist myself around his leg like a freaking like a boa like constructor. <laughs> uh, you know, they're too funny. Uh, cross country girl. Um, basically words of affirmation. So basically a puppy. Tell me I'm a good dog or something. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Words of affirmation. Nico? Uh, it's words of affirmation and gift giving. And technically, um, I'm for gift giving. It's more so half and half where I like to give gifts and I like to receive them. So yeah. And also, I mean, physical contact too, I guess. I'll cuddle, but I'm very feral, so I'm just kind of like, yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, not all the time. <laughs> uh, Tasha, I would say lots of attention. I would say probably all of them as well, but like attention. I'm like an attention whore. It's terrible, which is one of the main reasons why I do what I do. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just, I want all the attention. All not necessarily gifts. So it's like, pay attention to me. You know, so I was like, love me. So, yeah, lots of attention. All right. All right, Tiffany? I do a little bit of everything. I like to show affection, cuddle. Uh, I also like to buy stuff. I'll buy my girlfriend food all the time uh, or get a small steam gifts or 
you know, surprise her with something she's been wanting. So, I I mean, it's a little bit of affection, a little bit of spoiling, I guess. And she does the same to me in turn, so it's not like a one-way street. <laughs> That's good. That's good, though. I didn't know food was a love a love language because that, if that's if that's the case, then I I, I take back my answer. It's food. What? <laughs> well, I mean, what I do you... cook for her too, which I feel like is a form of love language. True. That would be an act of service, so it is. Yeah, there you go, acts of service. I was trying to think of what the hell the love language was that goes with that. There we go. Uh, uh, you... that even. I don't care. <laughs> um, I would have to say, I, I agree with a lot with Tiffany Star. I'm very mm -hmm. um, like obsequious and subservient. I would love to do stuff for the person that I'm with, gift giving, physical, whatever you need. And I would just like to have that in return. Not as much as I give it to you, but it just show me that you appreciate it. Yeah. And yeah. That's really me. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Out of there. <laughs> oh, kitty <okay>. cat. <laughs> Sorry. Alex? He's also an attention whore. Um, I would say because of the traumatic relationships I've been in, I take what I can get from you. Um, but for me, I think it's more of like, give me attention, like, show me that you want to talk to me and want to be with me. That's the way I, that's the way I get the point that you want to be with me, you know, and I, but I'm the same way, like, I love to do anything I can do for you, like, take you out, buy you food. The only thing I don't really feel comfortable with that much which also has to stem with the traumatic relationships is receiving gifts i'll buy you gifts but like receiving gifts kind of like it's like oh like i don't know kind of makes me feel weird i see i'm i'm kind of the same way because like i'm i'm very like iffy on gifts especially if they like i don't know buy me clothes or something i'm like I... <laughs> yeah you know, i had i had an ex just oh, no, depends on it i was gonna say it's like the words of affirmation but like when someone compliments you i feel the same way where uh, that you guys probably feel when someone gives you something probably like, kind of yeah. icky mm -hmm. yes i'm like are you lying you're just saying that like <laughs> you, you just want to get my pants <laughs> that too yeah <laughs> cloud uh definitely physical touch and words of affirmation tell me I'm the best and then hug me and pet me and kiss me and squeeze me and then make sure you tell me again that I am the best because I am. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. And this is for everyone. How do you identify? What are your preferred pronouns? And then what relationship style do you prefer? So I am heteroflexible, he, him, uh, non-monogamy. I am a meat popsicle. You <laughs> there <butt> it is. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who's listening and doesn't know where that comes from, it's a fifth element reference, and that's why it's funny. Um, it's not meant to be like disrespectful or mean. Um, I am bi, and she, her, they, them, and my preferred relationship style is uh, ethical non-monogamy. Come. Cross country girl. I am bi, go by she, her, and then style is monogamous. Come. All right, Nico. I, uh, I am, uh, what am I, what, what? Hold on. <laughs> oh, I'm pansexual. Um, I go by she, her, and I am currently in a monogamous relationship, but I have had a history of ethical non-monogamy. Or monogamous, I mean. So, yeah. Come. All right. Natasha? Um, I'm bisexual. I go by she, her. Um, I'm monogamous, but I'm starting to dabble in this whole hot wife stuff. Because, I, yeah. I could not. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> like, I could not it's... possibly stand the other person going elsewhere, but it's okay for me, as wrong as that sounds. So, that would have to be obviously consensual. So, yeah. We'll just so that, that is a form of ethical non-monogamy. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. But I have not ever even dabbled there yet. I just thought about it because um, if even Mister just like looks at somebody, it's like going through trying to find my cam, and he's like, "Oh, she's." Not. I'm like, "No, she's not." Shh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tiffany. Uh, my name is Tiffany Star. Uh, she/her. Uh, my pronouns and my style is. 
it, it's monogamous, but I am not opposed to and have been in open relationships, which I prefer over poly. Uh, I get to, you know, have some fun, and also I don't have to buy my five girlfriends five different Christmas gifts every year. So uh, I get to save some money, and I still get the benefits. So open relationships or just uh, monogamy. It depends on the my partner as well. All right. Denny? Yeah, I'm she, her. So she, her, demisexual, and monogamy, but open to poly. Open to experimenting. Come. Cool. Uh, Alex? Um, I identify as straight-ish. I wouldn't say I'm bi, but like recently, I don't know, like I can appreciate like, a woman, eh, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I mean, I'm not, I don't know, I'm still figuring that out, which also goes to like, I'm single right now, but I feel like as I get older, I'm becoming more open-minded, so I feel like I could possibly be a hot wife or, you know, open relationship, just, I don't know, we'll figure that out later, but um, yeah, that's what I would say. She, her, straight-ish. <laughs> Cool. All right. Cloud Freckles? Uh, I am pansexual. My pronouns are she, her, they, them. So and for relationship, it's more so I want the food and you make the food. Doesn't matter who <laughs> it is, but you just make me the food. <laughs> All right. That's fair enough. <laughs> so first question is, so rumor on the street has it that women aren't as horny as guys. Uh, they don't want sex as much as guys do. Is this true? <laughs> Uh, no. I think I speak for most that, people here like, when I say no. There's a reason why there was a bunch of giggles just there. <laughs> like, Come on now. Yeah, that's why. I went, <laughs> whatever. This just reminds me of the TikTok noise. Like, fuck no, fuck no, <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> um. So that is one of those misconceptions that gets thrown out there because. They want to make women seem less interested in sex and less like confident in their own sexualities. Um, so you just, you know, create this whole idea that women are just aren't as interested because you also shame them when they show interest. That they need a way to justify them being told no so many times. Like the only reason why they're saying no is because they don't like it. Exactly. Or that or the whole thing of, oh, I want a lady in the streets, but a freak in a sheets. No, man, I'll be a freak wherever I want. Okay. So seven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or or this whole you you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. That's not true. Why can't she be both? Why we gotta choose? You can have a whole housewife. Like <laughs> I feel like we have the option to be a little more picky as well, because in this society, uh at least in America, women are pretty much like the gatekeepers of sex. So it's not hard to find a man that will that wants to fuck you. I can just go down to the bar right now and ask any guy there, if he wants to, like, plow me, and he'll probably, one of them, like, one out of the ten will say yes, probably more. Uh, so, that's another benefit we have. I think we're a little picky, and that's why we don't just, you know, we're, we're not as well known to, like, fuck everyone, whereas guys just want to fuck everything. See, I think guys should have, like, higher standards than what some of them do. Some of them are, like... I, I've had conversations. I agree. Just, I, I've had conversations with guy friends. Oh. I've I've had conversations with guy friends who say like this chick was ugly, or like definitely not what they would usually go, and they still fuck and then complain about it why? later. I'm like, why? No, I, I know a lot of people no. that do that. If I'm not, if I don't find you attractive, it's not happening. Yeah. How There's do you no even, way. Like get, get like how? What do they spin right? on it up? So, I don't, like, I don't what? Know. so I don't know. one of the reasons why I think men can genuinely do that is because they are the like. For women, sex is so much more mental, mm -hmm. right? Like, hundred percent mentally and... exhausting. <laughs> so, like, so you know, we're already in our heads and our thoughts, like when we're having sex. Let alone like looking up at the person and going, "Oh, I'm not really that into you." Like, it's completely gone. The guys, you know, a lot of them could just kind of go, "Okay, cool." Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it depends because if you have like a troll who's got his game on. And who has, you know, the schlong and who knows how to use it? I'll, I'll settle. I mean, <laughs> you could just say, hey, let's get kinky. Gonna... Let's try a blindfold. You. <laughs> <laughs> just blindfold yourself. It's so, it's so mental You're just for me. This bag. <laughs> I have to have like that emotional connection with someone or else it's mm -hmm. just not enjoyable for me. Especially with this mm -hmm. past year. I, I was joking around with For Sale the other day. Like, I had sex for this podcast. I had sex, like, two days ago, and it's been, like, over a year. Just because I was Wait. like, guys are already desperate as they are. Add COVID, where, you know, you're not allowed to see a lot of people. 
You know what I mean? Like, I'm not kind of, I'm not trying to catch an STD. I'm not trying to catch COVID. So, you know, I took a break. Yeah, it's a good point. There's a lot of sexually frustrated people now due to COVID. So there are people who were having trouble getting sex, like men finding women to, you know, have intercourse with prior to the COVID-19. Now they're like, after this, they're like, they're antsy. They're ready to go. Well, I'm just wondering where Alexandria found someone drink COVID two days ago. I mean, after (laughs) a bumble. Oh. And I wasn't even going to give them the time of day, but I'm glad I did because I've never, like, cared about getting head from someone because it's always just sucked. You know, guys are like, oh, I want to do it, and I'm so good at it, and then they're like, and then they don't. (laughs) This is in my experience. This is my experience. (laughs) This one, like, went down, like, like, now I want him here every night. I want him here every night now, and I told him that. I was like, Alex, you know, oh. I honestly thought that you said you had sex for the podcast so that <laughs> you'd have something to talk yeah, about. And too. I was like, wait, that, that's what I was is that not what yeah. <laughs> That's what I that is what I said, but I was making a joke. It just happened to oh, be okay. <laughs> so nice uh, research. Tiffany, <laughs> Thank you. you. Anything you, for the podcast. You you mentioned that like it's uh or or someone did that it it's it was already hard for guys before and now COVID is like super hard. Combine that with the cancel porn movement going on right now. Can you imagine what? the shit what? show it would be if that really went into f- effect? Canceled porn? What? Who the fuck's yeah, canceled that, porn? That's, uh, that's a legit movement that's going on. It's like one of those like useless Everyone movements that'll mother- never do. Like, get anywhere, right? Like, <laughs> the same people that start the movements are the ones that watch porn religiously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those those people okay. like, or the children. Sex give a fuck about the children they're like no they're getting corrupted by sex it's funny like i have know mother... how those children were made <laughs> I, I don't some... know what you're talking about i came out of a plant i have some oh, guy yeah. friends that i i am in discord all the time with like on a call and one of them i don't know how we came about mia malkova and uh mm-hmm. one of them told me that he's never seen any of her videos and i was like what and i sent her one what? of my favorites of her in the street in the in the discord chat and the guys were like, like i've never had a girl send me a porn link before i'm like well there you go like that's a good one so watch it like <laughs> she's got a nice ass she's hot so i don't know how you're not watching me about kova well wow. so like there's a lot of uh religious fo- well, well the cancel porn movement is coming from religion of course mm-hmm. uh, so they're pushing that but like combine that with uh so i don't know if you've ever heard of the nofap group in reddit you heard of that so yeah they, what? they hold on they they believe if they don't masturbate that their body reabsorbs the sperm and like uh semen and uh boosts their testosterone levels <laughs> and like, keeps the i swear to god i'm not I making make sense. Sense. what, what, what I science understand. do they base they, this on they have hundreds of thousands <laughs> of followers hundreds of thousands of idiots so so yeah. they reabsorb yeah. the i swear to god so is Bro, it like it's like, yeah the sperm <laughs> just buries itself into your skin like lotion and just like yeah. goes around your body yeah it just I mean, makes you a better explanation to this or like <laughs> Okay, there's but like sex education aside, on. there's like basic biology. Exactly, right? basic biology, macrophages, is uh, like dead spermatozoids, or whatever you call them. I'm French, so anyway, um, spermies dead, macrophage eat gone. That's it. They become trash. <laughs> like it's they don't go anywhere. They don't boost your testosterone. Yeah. If they... anything, the less it gets used, the less you will have. Mm-hmm. Well, they're saying if forget that like sperm men... made you like hulked out, I would literally be a she hulk by now, but that's just me. <laughs> you know, and 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 men aren't like women where we're like we are born with a certain amount of eggs. Like men produce sperm, so it's not like it's gonna like they're just gonna sit there and like get reabsorbed. <laughs> they get oh, I have no more. Right. Like, but I mean, if they don't, if they do this long enough, then and then it dies down, then at least they can't reproduce. Okay. There you one go. Of my viewers, Bingo. One so of my I've... viewers sent to link and said that there is a slight increase after seven days, but like that's it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm not even entirely convinced the people in those nofap groups aren't faffing it. Let's be honest. A lot of yes. uh, the stuff that like I I can't say the word because Twitch banned it, but men who have difficulty getting sex, 
uh, a lot of it's projection where they'll like hate on women and say, oh, I'm, you know, the MGTOW groups, I'm going my own way. I, and they're like, oh, I don't want to be with women anymore. But you know that like they're, they're secretly crying inside for their like uh, secret waifu or their like trad wife or something. I I honestly feel like a lot of them had like either a porn or masturbation problem and this has helped them. So now they're like preaching it to everybody. Uh, because like hello if you're spending fucking hours a day masturbating and watching porn and you stop guess what your life is going to get back on track yeah uh, like i uh, i don't get it yeah, i don't get it that, yeah. so uh back to the original question here we went off on a tangent so rumor on the street was <laughs> women aren't as horny as guys and uh we kind of touched on it but slut shaming how <laughs> I see Nico shaking her head. <laughs> so one one thing I've never understood is why people shame women for doing the same thing men do. Like it I think it's a control thing. I think control guys thing. want to have that control over a woman and be like, she's mine, she can only be with me, even if they're not someone you know. I don't know, like so I'm going to I'm going to actually remove the guys from that because I feel like a lot of women are slut shamed by other women. Yes. That that and, too. That too, yeah. And and I don't so <clears throat> I I think that there is an element of control obviously mm -hmm. because women who are confident in their sexuality can come off as I don't know, confident, but some people find that threatening and it's usually people that are insecure. Um but I see more slut shaming from women than I do men and it's usually like if you scroll through Instagram and a woman posts her, a picture of herself in a bikini, it's usually like it, it's slut shaming combined with body shaming. They'll make them feel bad for for how they look and what they're wearing, and then they'll tell them that they shouldn't be wearing it. And um, I, I feel like society just kind of pins us against each other, and that's why we do it. See, it's interesting um, that you say that because I have the same sentiment of women being pitted against each other, but I think that still traces back to patriarchal values is that these women are absorbing these things from men that want control and they feel the need to gain control of themselves is to act out and start shaming and attacking. There's also the religious mm -hmm. factor as well. Cloud, you froze for me. I don't know. if oh, yeah. yeah, she's yeah. frozen on my end too. She was like, ah. But, oh yeah. yeah it's a cute freeze frame um, but yeah yeah i think I, I think what she's saying is like the pick me also thing stems from I that agree. i agree with that too but what i also think is that it's it also comes a lot from women who I do said she would it or don't don't like own what they want or they like their husbands want certain things and they know that you know another type of women may or may not give it to them and they're not comfortable owning it or they haven't tried it or they have been taught not to or whatever mm -hmm. But I think it's a, a thing of um, intimidation or, 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 you know, that that's how they lash out. Like, if I base myself off of, like, TikTok, I will get shamed on my looks or that I look old by men, but I get slut-shaming by women. Because I ha I've, I've never gotten slut-shamed by men. Like, my phone is full of men. And, like, there's no, nobody's complaining. But it's, I think that's, it's a lot of a, of a, yeah, feeling intimidated, I would think. I was reading through tiktok comments and that kind of stuff but uh someone had mentioned that a lot of the men that do thirst trap content and like uh i don't know is our sluts on tiktok uh have like everybody in their comments supporting them like hey yeah fuck yeah that's great but you go to any woman's like thirst trap and it's just full of fucking just hate but if so, they stop up, yeah, it's a double standard. Mine gets mm -hmm. down all the time, and I recreated one from one of uh, that we follow each other on TikTok. He did a, a, a thirst trap. I did the exact same one, and I mine got taken down. I think Sorry, the reason a lot of men get like praised for doing the same thing women do is what I mentioned earlier that it's a lot harder for men to just like get a bunch of women every night as opposed to women getting <laughs> men. So they lack the power. So whenever they actually get women they're like good for you you finally did it whereas <laughs> any of us trying to get a man to come home with us is not not a challenge whatsoever so that's what i think so i feel like there's also an and and i like to go for the science part there is a biological aspect to why women kind of pin each other against are like pinned against each other and it's 
competition, right? Like biological, like it's, it's in our nature to want to like, even though we don't want to, like, you might not want to have kids and find a partner, but it's just kind of part of our nature to want to have children and find a partner to procreate with and attractive women pose a threat to your weird biological clock saying, well, she could take your partner away and you won't be able to procreate. Um, So, so like slut shaming just in my experience is usually coming from that part right or like if you're an attractive woman and you're confident um and the people that are looking at you on social media aren't as confident it makes them feel better to attack you Mm -hmm. it feels better to tear you down to their level Mm -hmm. um so something that cloud was touching on that uh i'll touch on is (laughs) yeah is um so purity culture and misogyny plays a lot into that which those all tie back to religion unfortunately mm-hmm. sorry like my cat all turned off from the theater <laughs> oh, <laughs> like we said she would she turned it off <laughs> i can't leave her by herself she's like no mom pay attention to me <laughs> uh i could finish my thought though sorry yeah, for <laughs> that little brat <laughs> wanted to it. so i was gonna say um you know, I, I agree that women get pitted against each other, but I think it's due to patriarchal values that women feel the need to topple over other women to try to be accepted by other men, right? I think that we've all heard of the the pick me girl, right? I think it's a pretty rude term to use, but I understand it's, you know, where a woman will align herself with patriarchal values and in turn attack other women to try to fit in better with men to be accepted better by men. So I think it all is systematic from that and it stems from that where these girls start to feel insecure because it's like this weird back and forth of you need to look a certain way we want you to be hot you can only be hot by these standards but at the same time if you're embracing being hot by those standards then you're a whore then you're a slut you know i think it it these women will feel insecure because they think they need to look a certain way so then they'll attack other women that are you know past that point of being shackled by these patriarchal values of like you know i can own my sexuality i can own my body but i think it ultimately stems back to that and purity culture and religion which have always had you know men in power in those religious communities and that's why i think girls end up attacking other girls so denisha um or denny made a really good point in chat um about women also maybe not feeling appreciated by their partners Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it can Uh, stem from that as well i see that like lashing out because of that so Look, that can be truth. Well, that you know, that is because also, um, there's there is the issue of men going after. I keep saying these types of women, but like anyway, the type of women that gets slut shamed and whatnot, instead of you know communicating with their wives or communicating with their girlfriends or whomever they're with, and so that also adds to the threat is the whole you know non communication thing. Like we can throw this in like a hundred billion different directions. You know, but I think that there's not one universal reason why slut shaming happens, but there's a bunch of little issues like spread around so many spheres that could bring on slut shaming. It's definitely not like a linear problem. It's it's multifaceted and oh yeah, it's kind of stems outwardly. You just gotta fight back against it. Call that shit out when you see it. Anyone else for that topic? We move on. Yeah, just real quick. Um, sure. It's someone who, in my position who's done like a lot of adult stuff. Um, I actually get slut shamed uh, somewhat often, but usually when it's not not usually by women, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm a lesbian and I only hang out with girls that want to fuck me. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, but usually it's by men, and usually it's after I reject them they start calling me slut, uh, or yeah. it's by the religious yeah. fundamentalists. Or the people who uh, have difficulty, you know, the no fap crowd. Uh, what are they? What are they called? Um, chuds, whatever. Uh, when they uh, go on my Twitter and say, "You you do you know adult film, so uh, you're you're dirty and you have no morals or something like that." When deep down, you know that they wish they could live the life I do, 
and they're just like projecting because I get to have sex with attractive people that I would have sex with for free because they're hot. I get to travel. Uh, I get to go uh, network, go to exclusive parties. I get uh, I get to have a lot of fun, make my own hours. So what the hell are you trying to shame me for? This is fucking exactly. great. <laughs> well, there, there is the whole, like, I, I, when men get rejected, it, it hurts the ego. Like, and so many of them instantly go for, like, oh, I didn't want to fuck you anyway, you fatty. Or, like, stuff like that. And you're like, well, then why were you flirting with me? Right? <laughs> Literally well, they say, no like, point. I hope you get blank and stuff. Like, they say some crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah. yeah that it's one, like, they go straight I think, the I think one thing, it, um, women are perceived as like fragile emotional beings and like you can't like sex because like it's just you want attention you can't just like sex it's, you want attention from other guys you know like you need that validity from and it's, well it's not, like, i do want, want attention like, like, to my genitals yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. So. like guys it's like oh you get sex it's like, oh sweet like nice one but it's like women oh you just wanted someone to give you attention and you know like that's what you have to resort to is having giving that up so you can get attention from a guy if attention yeah, or orgasms are good yeah i i literally just did a tiktok on this like yesterday but i that's one thing that's always confused me as well is like why guys get so offended when they get rejected like if you handle rejection well right. like i honestly if i ask somebody out if they say yes great if they turn me down I don't give a fuck. Okay. Like, there's plenty so of other people out there that do like me. You know what I mean? So, like, me me handling it well, I've had people circle back around that either want to then go on a date later on or then want to hook up later on because I handled it well. I'm saying clearly I didn't, like, treat them like a piece of shit. But I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of guys go through life scorched earth style. Like, yeah. they literally burn all their bridges and connections along the way, which is fucking stupid. Yeah. They, like, do you not think women anyway. talk? <laughs> like, right? hello. There are some With men who are so insecure, not like you. You're, you're obviously, like, you know, a big dick Chad that can, you know, take it with stride. <laughs> but, and I just got a sub from that. Thank you. But there are a lot of men who are insecure who will try to uh hit on a woman and any kind of rejection to them they take it as an attack on their masculinity like oh i'm not masculine enough to get this woman so then they'll they'll shit talk them like i didn't mm -hmm. want to fuck you anyways you're you're a piece of shit you're ugly to mm -hmm. try and kind of bandage their ego so that they don't like break down and cry from that rejection i feel like it's uh insecure little boys not becoming men <laughs> like i have to have some something from for sale uh the guy I started talking to, well, not talking to, but whatever, um, before the last guy I hooked up with, um, he'd asked me what I wanted, and I was like, I don't want to hook up with anybody right now, and I'm not looking for a relationship, I'm just looking to, like, hang out with people, you know? Um, and then, like, maybe a month later, he hit me up again, like, at three in the morning, obviously it was a booty call, and I told him, like, I know this is booty call, I'm not into it. <laughs> and But, like, he took it really well, and, like, we were just talking a bit, and I was like, you know, maybe sometime down the road whatever and then we just started talking more and like just because he didn't do all that stuff you know yeah it came up the conversation came about and i was like yeah you know fuck it like changed my mind but then he found out that i'm not a trump supporter and then he called it off um so there's that oh, uh, okay. yeah. hey, he what? saved you a lot of like trouble there a lot of trouble what yeah. the fuck so I was like, Get your so, dumb ass out of here you dodged the bullet as far as i'm concerned Bye, yeah, bitch. Yeah. Bye. the only reason i even thought that i could possibly do like a friends for ben friends with benefits type situation is because he's kind of like that kind of like basic douchebag personality so i knew i would never catch feelings but then that happened and i'm like oh so you're taking sex off the table for me all right whatever <laughs> but okay <laughs> Right. So whatever, but that was yeah. So I've told that to mm. someone before. I'm like, you're a bro zone. Like you literally have bought yourself a one way ticket to bro zone. And like a bit later, I was like, maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a ticket so well. Who knows? <laughs> um. Shit. What was I gonna say? I was gonna say something. Wait, can y'all hear me? I don't remember. Yeah. I yes. don't know who that was, but um, we can hear that you. That would be Denny. Uh, I'd like to say yeah. something. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I used to think that I would always get shit for um, the amount of sex that went on in my head. 
<laughs> and like the things I thought of because I would hear men talk about sex and I'm like this is the most basic shit I think I've ever heard <laughs> right? in my life and I'm like and y'all like, think y'all are so cool right now I'm like dude if they heard what was going on because I constantly think about getting railed it's just a constant <laughs> thing <laughs> like literally I'll be doing nothing and then boom I'm getting railed in my head it's, I'm thinking about how to go to sleep yeah so exactly I think about dick to go to sleep and sometimes it won't even make me horny. I'll just like, literally like he's like next to me and I could, you know, grab his dick, or whatever. And I'm just like thinking about all this disgusting, terrible shit, disgusting being a, a, a positive word here. And like, I'm thinking of all this shit to go to sleep, like just about just dick. <laughs> yeah. So it's like hearing this stuff, like about, men thinking a certain way about women being super sexual it's like some of y'all don't even compare to a lot of the shit that we talk about or because i would like the girls would be talking about it in private and then you hear the guys talking about it out loud and what we're saying is way more rough God, yeah than what they're talking about so it's <laughs> like dude get think the about fuck that out of my face. all the time where i'm like i swear to god if somebody if we all had bubbles in our head like if everybody can like have a mind reading power i would, that would be, be bad fuck. oh my god like, too many horny bubbles yeah and then <laughs> This guy was like, oh, like, I have to, we, we were having a little spicy conversation a couple days ago, <laughs> and he was in public, yeah, and he was like, let's just say I have to, like, I wish I was wearing a belt right now, I have to, like, you know, stand it up a bit. I'm like, I'm just sitting here drowning, and you wouldn't even be able to tell, like, <laughs> but there was, like, a, a TikTok I saw one time about the whole, uh, how guys talk about things and how girls talk about it, and, like, the girls are literally putting each other in positions demonstrating what was going on, and I'm like, but that's yeah. so true, like, <laughs> Oh, of course. So true. And it went like this, you know? And it mm -hmm. was like, no, this. get your knee up higher. You're I'm like, not yeah, doing it you're right. Like, yeah, and then we're doing it. It's just so crazy. I so true. do not have enough female friends. Oh, it didn't work. Jojo, Jojo, Jojo I got you. Right oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had the lay down so the other guy could fit in too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Klinger. This is Klinger. Hello, I think. Hi. Can you all hear oh, me? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, Hi. we can hear you. Oh, yeah. no, you're good. Oh my um, gosh, my computer let's... like completely like shut down. <laughs> it was just like <laughs> there's Aww. too many things going on. I'm like, what's happening? That's all good. Um, oh. let's uh let's circle back. Do you want to do like your intro here, and then I'll ask you those couple questions, and we'll jump back into regular questions here. Sure. Yeah. So um yeah so I'm. I'm Liz, uh, or Els, or this is Klinger, whatever. Um, and I, well, I'm here because I make smart vibrators. So basically, I'm, I've built these different uh, vibrators that use sensors and biofeedback, so people can actually visualize their own arousal and orgasm. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, like, kind of, I jumped in a little bit on the talk about, like, you know, just women are not horny and you know or you know it's more mental versus physical and i'm like it's it's everything for everybody it, there you know there's a lot of complexity there that you can start breaking down but yeah um yeah that's that's what that's what i do in a nutshell i make vibrators and make people happy hell yeah um i've actually seen a lot of the tiktoks and stuff and it looks very interesting like looking at the uh rhythmic contractions and how there are different uh types of orgasms how some of them are explosive and then trail off and some of them are like more gradual it was pretty interesting to see i i, I like the content that's coming out yeah, yeah that's oh yeah you you and i are gonna have to have a conversation later because i work in the adult novelty industry oh yeah <laughs> i would yeah. like to <laughs> just in case hiring. <laughs> can i just yeah. sit in <laughs> I just want to like test the products. That's yeah. all. I, I know the people that are hiring, and I do need uh, some influencers that are willing to review and test products. So, what's up? Yeah. Well, <laughs> hello. My name is Jojo. Deisha. Job opportunities. <laughs> I, I think we're all down. Just say Heck group yeah. test on Discord. If I leave, if I yeah, if I leave this thing for a bit, it's not related. It's not related to our conversation. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, are um, you for sale? Are you talking about my co-founder Anna's TikTok videos? Yeah. 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 Those. Oh my god. Those are really yeah. interesting. I Wait, like what is the about that? Because I went to find and I can't find it. So oh. her 
her username on TikTok is Anna the Average. And I added you for sale, by the way. Hell yeah. Liz, uh, let's see here. What is your love language? Oh, I took a <laughs> quiz on this recently. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's probably, or from what I vaguely remember, it was a mixture of touch and also uh, people, or like helping, like being helped and helping other people. So um, so some of the setup, uh, my, well, my husband helped me set up and I'm like, oh yeah. So th things like that. It's, it's very, it's very vanilla. It's very, but it's very nice. That's all right. Um, if you could give your younger self a piece of advice, either about sex or relationships. So thinking back what you've learned up to this point, what advice would you give your younger self? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, I think honestly, this probably goes for a lot of us. It's just giving less fucks about what other people think. Yeah. Because it, like you get like I, I grew up in a more sort of conservative Midwestern family and it wasn't like, you know, like like a lot of us here. And it, yep. it's not like where well well, my parents aren't super religious, but sex is not a, you know, you just don't talk about it. And it, it just caused a lot of uh questioning and like you know am i normal yeah. is this normal is that normal and yeah it wasn't until i started uh before this i started selling sex toys to people and i got questions from everyone from college students to uh people you know retirement parties and everything in between and everyone's just like oh hey you know like mm -hmm. i'm you know i'm weird too <laughs> everyone's weird but also we have all these questions and why don't we talk about it more exactly I think it should be normalized. That's what we're trying to do. Totally. Um, it, so how do you identify? What are your preferred pronouns? And then what's your preferred relationship style? How do I identify? Um, I guess I like people. <laughs> I mean, like, that's probably the easy, you know, pansexual would probably be the, the best okay. term for that. And yeah. um, she, her, they, them pronouns are all fine. What was the last question? Uh, your preferred relationship style. So there's uh, monogamy, non-monogamy, yeah. polyamory, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm monogamous, but I'm I'm open to you know I'm open to other relationship styles. You know, depending on the relationship or the time, because all of that can change over time, just depending on how your life changes, what you are looking for, what you need. Like that. That's the other thing I would say to my old or my younger self. It's like, you know, it's fine if you identify, you know, if your identity changes over time, if you feel mm -hmm. that something makes more sense as you're, you know, yep. older versus when you're 15. Yep. Sexuality is fluid. Yes. Um, is it really? <laughs> yes. So many people exactly. don't know that. Oh my God. Um, all right. So back to topics here. Did anyone else have anything for the women aren't as horny as guys are? Uh, it's bullshit. That's all. <laughs> I love you so much, Jojo. <laughs> it's bullshit. I, I think I'm, I don't know. Bullshit. I'm not. I don't know what's wrong with me. Like my well, roommate you know, can fucking go do all the shit and I'm over here like, eh, I don't really feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think it has to do more with like, yeah, like I'm much more interested in like the mind. So like if you really get me going like intellectually then i don't know i think that's the only thing i can really find sexual like so, i don't know i guess i sexualize the mind or something have you looked know, into a demisexual no i have i i honestly i'm not that educated on this shit, so yeah i googled and it like not long ago it's sapiosexual and then uh denny had mentioned uh she's demisexual which that has a lot to do with uh you, you had mentioned you, you need a a emotional connection and kind of get to know the person a little beforehand that kind of plays into that as well yeah like i've tried nightstands and stuff uh yeah no one night stands can't do it yeah can't, no. can't do it if I've i i'll be dry i've tried, tried yeah, I've, events, like, can't do it i've tried it like once or twice and i i do not no, I'm i'm more quality over quantity mm -hmm. <laughs> i'd rather see. have good sex than lots of sex I tried the whole like one night stand. I'm gonna do the slut thing, 
um, after I got divorced and it was one of the most disappointing experiences I've ever had in my life because every, they, they like, they all were not satisfactory um in the sexes except for the the one who wanted me to walk the path of christ with him oh it's oh. gonna happen for the atheist um <laughs> so so i was like yeah okay this uh whole like you know playing the field thing isn't working out for me <laughs> i think that also has to do with like you need to have somebody who's gonna learn what you like so I'm I'm in the kink lifestyle, which also kind of yeah. makes it a lot harder to just have flings. I, I feel because... like when guys, yeah, when guys ask me what I like, I'm like, I feel like I'm vanilla. But then, like in the moment, I'm a fucking freak. I don't know what it is. Like, <laughs> what? Like, I don't know. Choke me, smack me, spank me. <laughs> like, I guess I I'm like into like public sex, like risky sex. Like, let me tell you, I've only come like maybe a handful of times with guys. I've been having sex for like five years. I lost my virginity when I was nineteen. Um. That only handful of okay. time. Yeah, 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 but it's a me thing. It's like a mental thing. Oh, um, okay, okay. The only times I've orgasmed with the guy is when they're coming inside of me, which is really ris- risky. Oh. Like it's bad. So I mean, there's I, kinks around that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I need to. Well, I mean, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> I love that. Just get on the birth controls, my dear. I, I was on right. it, and then like it expired. I have the new. Ver- what is it next one on in my arm no i have the next one in my in my uh, arm but then like the last year was completely wasted which is the last year i had for my uh thing and i just haven't gone and renewed it because i was like i'm not having sex so but now i I need to i need to get back on it yeah i need to get back on it have you considered the iud (laughs) i thought it's uh, the thought of something in my body is kind of weird i don't know yeah hold on (laughs) like one like people that get iud's you can get them without um, hormones as well. So, like, if you're like super sensitive to hormones, and they like they make me an awful person. Yeah. Um. So I don't do birth control. Um. But it, my my insides don't want to have kids anyway, so it's perfect. <laughs> um, but you can get them without um the hormones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As well. I have to look into that. The mm-hmm. copper IUD has no hormones because mm-hmm. they gave me migraines like insane crazy. Yeah, I don't have to it. worry about this yeah. uh, topic really because I'm trans. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. Right? Right? I have to. <laughs> I have to worry on the other end. But thanks to hormones, uh, it's really difficult for me to impregnate anyone since I don't mm-hmm. actually like come anymore. It's all just like clear and like bleh. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I can still fuck well, but like I I'm not like a, a fountain or anything like that. <laughs> Well, the, so, the hormones that you take change the consistency. Oh, yeah, they lower your testosterone cell. level, including mm-hmm. sperm count and the like. Uh, you know how sperm's genuinely, like, uh, usually white. If you're on hormones long enough, it comes out clear. It almost, like, uh, it looks like gel, like uh, deodorant. Mm-hmm. It's, you know. <laughs> I'll remember that. D- just don't, like, wipe it under your armpits or anything like that. <laughs> no, oh, God. Unless you want your no. co-workers to look at you weird. No. <laughs> that just reminds me All of something right. I'm making myself do. Not, like, yeah. All right. With the All right. Oh. Topic change here. What Topic type of change. household were you raised in? Religious or non-religious? And how do you think that's affected your life? Non-religious for me, but super strict. Like, my dad's born in Greece. He old. And <laughs> she's, yeah, strict as fuck. <laughs> but not religious. Come. No, religious Tiffany. Uh, I was raised in a religious household, and uh, it wasn't for my betterment. They did teach me some good morals, but it's like common sense stuff, like you know, don't steal, don't kill, duh, that kind of stuff. But I was very disappointed because my dad, he's kind of a bigot, so he just used it as like a shield uh, for his bigotry. And my mom is a devout Catholic, and she's actually nice. She's a turn the other cheek kind of woman. She uh, donates stuff. She'll work at like soup kitchens or. Uh, volunteer at other places. Uh, She's a really nice woman. But one day I asked her if she read the entire Bible and she said no. And she's basing her entire existence, her entire morals, and going to church every Sunday for like 40 odd years on a book she didn't even read. And that's when I realized, you know, it's not for me. I wouldn't say it affected me negatively in some aspects, but in others, uh, the only, the only, big issue I have is the brainwashing. As far as I know, telling a child when they're uh, three 
that if they're bad, they'll go to hell and burn forever as child abuse. So I have to agree on that. Yeah, I was well. raised in a weird household where like they went through phases. Like I went to church every Sunday because my mom was Catholic. Um, and I did my catechism and everything and got kicked out of, uh, what is it, Sunday school? Because uh, I kept asking questions. Um, but, <laughs> you know, apparently uh, I didn't want to listen to the, no, you don't question it, you just accept it. Um, my mom was never really, like, we didn't have conversations about, like, real things right so like they, they i was just expected to to be a good girl and um not be a slut and uh be straight and uh, get married and have children or whatever it is that you know hispanic kids are indoctrinated with that that was the expectation <laughs> i was definitely raised in a religious conservative household this kind of stuff wasn't talked about much so i started doing my research early uh and then also have been subscribed to like well not anymore but like growing up was subscribed to men's health and cosmo growing up so you learn a lot from <laughs> both of those magazines <laughs> growing up which got me interested in the topic it's just continued since then but uh yeah that was definitely not something that was covered i sex education was literally like Hey, here's uh, here's porn. There you go. <laughs> like, oh, all right, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> so you can imagine how many people out there probably get that same type of education as well. I mean, I did when I was younger, and I'm like, oh wow, this lady has a penis. It's pretty hot. So, <laughs> <laughs> experience with religion because we didn't talk about sex, but my parents aren't conservative. Like, my parents are like vote for Obama, but we're Catholic. So it's like it was a weird. It's Wonder like it's message. the greatest thing ever because like when they got divorced, I actually like talked to my priest and he's like, "Yeah, it's okay. Your mom divorced your your dad." And I'm like, "That's wait, what?" It's like I had weird Catholics that were actually nice, and I didn't realize that wasn't normal until I talked to other people and realized all the other churches were mean to kids. Because like, my teacher <laughs> told me it was okay that my parents got divorced and got me pizza because I was crying in Sunday school over it. And so she oh, gave me pizza, pizza and talked to me for like an hour. <laughs> so. I feel bad for everyone because I'm like, my church didn't make me hate myself too much. They just didn't talk about sex, but they at least try to teach us that it's okay to leave people and that it's okay. But I think we were a weird part of the world. I don't think liberal Catholics is very normal. It's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, so... Nico? So I come from a Catholic family, like we're Fil I'm Filipino, so as some of you may know, all of them are very Catholic. Uh, so growing up, I was basically like I've been all the way. Like I'm, I had like I got my Eucharist, I was confirmed, and then I think the way that I grew up, it kind of pushed me over the edge. As in, sexuality was very much so not a thing until high school, and then high school, and then I'm like, well, what's that? I want that, and it's like the weird side, weird side of of sexuality, right? And mm -hmm. then I'm like, but why do girls look good too? <laughs> and then it starts to like go into this thing of, well, what's wrong with me? Why do I feel this way? But I'm in this religion, and this religion says there's only two ways, and that's why I'm not practicing anymore because one, I'm pansexual, and I like everyone and everything. So. <laughs> Uh, it's been a weird way. Like, it's definitely scarred me to a certain extent, religion has. But it's also the reason why I found BDSM and why I'm in the kink community. So I can't be too angry at it. Um, I do have friends who are very much so Catholic, very much so, you know, religious. But I haven't had too many people get angry and then this is just like my personal experience with it like I didn't ha I don't have people telling me oh like don't do you boo like I have very supportive friends and some family I did get disowned twice <laughs> so you know one of those things <laughs> now my question is what is the kinks 
I'm just curious now. I don't know if I'm right, gonna... like all ears. That should have been a question. Go around and say your kinks. Oh, honey. We <laughs> yes! have been here all day. How much, <laughs> how much time <laughs> do you have? Like, what are these kinks, girl? Like, you, your top what? five. How's that? Just top five. Um, Roll it back gee, like it's... Uh, that, that puts me on the spot. But um, uh, I'm into pet play, DDLG, uh, rope, like shibari. Um, I have a fetish with cum. Like, it's big. It's really big. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Anyways, and what was that for? I love this talk um, show. <laughs> Agree. All of those. All of those. <laughs> A few other things that we could talk about later. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, we can save that for afterthoughts. <laughs> Damn. Now I gotta relog after I quit smoking for today. <laughs> um. Um. My my household wasn't like religious but like i grew up on my mom with my mom's side of the family i was there a lot and they're mormon like heavily mormon oh. uh and i don't know if it has to do with the religion but they were very like you know men are gonna break your heart men are the fucking worst sex isn't that great like blah 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 and like i grew up like being afraid of men and i didn't realize that until later and this was at a very wow. young age, like very young elementary, because whenever I felt like whenever I was alone with a male teacher or a, some like a male teacher would compliment me, um, I would feel very uncomfortable and I did not want to be around them by myself. And it's not anything inappropriate. It was like I used to sing a lot and be in choir when I was younger and I had a music teacher would be like, you have a great voice. You should join choir or like a gym teacher that one time I left my notebook at, at P.E. And he just drew a superhero in there and he like gave it back to me. And I was like, that's kind of fucking creepy. But like it, it, I didn't realize it until very much later that that was completely normal. And I shouldn't be afraid of men and like, you know what I mean? Like, so that, that's definitely until recently been like a problem in my life where I just was never comfortable around men, especially older men. Like I always felt like they had like bad intentions or something. Um, that's that's like it with them i don't know if it had to do with being them being mormon or just shitty people they're very hypocritical so possibly yeah a little bit of column a a little bit of column b yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh um, anyone else oh, me Go ahead. um so my parents pretended to be into the religion thing because my grandmother one of my grandmothers is super religious so, you know, when I was younger, they took me to church or whatever. My parents never went. I went with my grandmother. So that told me right off the bat, so my parents don't even give a shit about this. Like, why <laughs> should I? So as when I turned 10, I just started sleeping in church. And then that's when my grandmother stopped taking me. And then, boom, I never went to church again. I, I'm, not, I'm not into that whole thing. You're not going to take up a portion of my day. I'm sorry. Yes. Hell oh, yeah. <laughs> Takes too much time. It's a waste of time, too. <laughs> they well, they want you always, involved like, and pushing that shit out like 24-7. No, and they want your money. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. They, want, they want your money, um, and it's just boring. They go over the same script, the same, like, 28 <laughs> stories, but they won't go over the really bad ones because they know that'll push people away. Because if you actually read the right. Bible, that's the biggest way of becoming an atheist. You read it, and you're like, holy <laughs> shit, this is... You're like, this wow, is some, this is fucked up. This is some awful I'm stuff, past. yeah. <laughs> You're like, why are we worshiping this person? This is weird. Yeah, I just want to spend my money on fun things. Like, I, I'm sorry. I don't want to give you 10% of my wages. I'm fine. Have a nice day. <laughs> right? And there's some of us that, like like me, I don't understand abstract stuff. I don't know how to, like, read between the lines. And so when they're reading these stories, I'm like, what the, what the fuck is he saying? Ugh. Like, oh, why are we, we talking do. about bread? I'm not understanding. <laughs> <laughs> why are we it's his body. <laughs> Not gonna lie, no, it's not his body. It's like I don't mm -hmm. get like my. I think symbolically, it's supposed to be his body. It's not like mm -hmm. if you actually think it's his body, then you're fucking crazy. It's, which you know. Jesus is <laughs> well, well, obviously on the no, people. But I, I can't yeah. read between the lines. So like the whole time I'm there, and I'm like, comes the body. What's going on here? I remember distinctly going to church and they did the whole story. I'm sure a lot of you growing up with religion will know the story about how the devil was. Uh, I can't remember who the guy's name is because I don't give a fuck about the Bible. But the devil asked God to prove that like all these people will love him unconditionally. So God's like, oh yeah? 
watch me fuck up this guy's life. Oh, and he like, and then he yeah, like killed all his cattle, and he uh, burnt his house wife, down, and killed, killed his children. family. And then he's like, "See, he still loves me." And that, and I was in church. And I'm like, "Wait, God did that, right? Not the devil." What Didn't an asshole! With his kids and all that. And he killed his uh, whole why are we worshiping this yeah. Satan? Oh, wow. I mean, this God has well. given it back to him tenfold. So he got a new wife and new kids, and basically forgot the wife and kids, and then got a bunch of sheep and cows back. Yeah, the story of Job is fucked up, literally. Well, I mean, can I just point out that there's like an entire part of the Bible where they're describing how much this woman lusts after this man's penis. And his loads. His loads? <laughs> yes. His okay. loads. Oh, that's I've oh, never read the book, so I know oh, nothing. It is, it yeah, me either. <laughs> it's in the book of Ezekiel. And it's like an entire thing about like her like lusting after this man's penis that was like a donkey. Okay. Oh, wait, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm so confused. I'm... <laughs> Dude, yeah. <laughs> Look, he actually knows that verse, like I by know, memory. Yeah, what you're it, talking about. So it God. goes, she remembered her lover with the penis like a donkey and the flood of semen like a horse. And yep. like, penis like a donkey. <laughs> how does she know how much a horse ejaculates? You know, what? I don't want to know the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, if you breed horse. Well, I guess back then. I was going to say, look at the Ottoman Empire and what they did. Did with she their breed horses? horses? Did they no. breed her? <laughs> So yeah. All right. Go, I've never next read the topic here, unless know. somebody else has anything to add to it. Ready for the next topic? All right. How common is it for women to lie about their orgasms? All the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know what you said earlier? Never. Five times, four or five times in like six years. Oh man. This one guy okay, thought so... I came twice, and I was like, "Sorry, babe, it didn't happen even once." So, I never came with a man. I had sex for the first time at like 14. Shame on me, whatever, blah, blah, blah. No shame, but you know what I mean. So, mm -hmm. and I came for the first time with another person other than myself, obviously. It was with a woman and I was 28. And so, and then the man that I'm with now fucking knocks it out of the park. I mean, there's still a puddle on my bed. So, <laughs> nice. Right? But, so I <laughs> lied like my entire life. I hmm. refuse to, and I think that if if women continue to lie about their orgasms, they're doing themselves a disservice. And you're doing other women a disservice because you're, you're allowing... training the guys to be like, "Oh, okay, whatever I'm doing is working." But in like, my this, defense, this is clearly working. I didn't know what it felt like because for some reason, if I'm with another person, it doesn't feel the same way as when I'm by myself. So I didn't. Mm -hmm. I thought that I was. I thought, right. but mm -hmm. it was, and I found that out with this uncharming young lady that, <laughs> that I, I know that there's like a, a general like fear of all of the, th the repercussions that can come from it um but i feel like if you're worried about hurting the other person's feelings then this is the time to bring in some toys to make sure that you're having orgasms during these encounters with your partners um so that you're not like kind of just sitting there and taking it and not enjoying yourself that's my right because right. i don't want a guy to feel like you know bad about not making me come because it is I well mean, just yeah it. Just <laughs> preface it with hey i it it's hard for me to finish so don't be surprised yeah. if if i, do I that. don't i do that now <laughs> because i'm like let's just focus and i'm more of like a giver than a receiver as well so like i don't like i said before like i never really cared to have anybody go down on me especially because i know it's very hard for me to even come like unless it's by myself sometimes even by myself i'll be like eh, i'm just doing it because i'm bored you know um mm. um same so when i get so <laughs> nervous like the pressure like when they're like i want you to come first and i'm like we're gonna be here for like two hours dude if we want me to do it like and i don't want that i'm also like 15 20 minutes that's enough like please don't keep going i'm sore like i get bored get i like out zone out here. after a while like i'm just like let's just go like that's it for me so my problem my biggest problem is making the guy feel bad if he can't make me come so well, now i tell them like don't worry about it let's just focus i mean on there's you. also that like expectation <laughs> that like people cannot enjoy sex without an orgasm orgasms are nice but mm -hmm. you can still enjoy sex without having an orgasm so yes, there's, I, yeah. there's way too much pressure put on people in general like men yeah. women whatever on on did you come like right. no but i had a great time it was awesome 
<laughs> I'm gonna start saying that no, but I had a great time. Yeah. I was gonna say I think there's a lot more pressure put on like younger people when they first start having sex. They think yeah. they have to give their partner an orgasm, that they have to experience an orgasm. Like I started having sex when I was 15, and I knew that I was faking it because I was like, I've done this myself. You're not doing it right. But um, <laughs> here. right, and I noticed that there were some like gentleman partners that I had that were feeling insecure. So I thought maybe I had to say it to make them feel bad. Cause I'm a teenager. I don't know. I'm insecure about myself. I don't want them to feel the same way I do. But mm-hmm. as I got older, I'd be like, yeah, did you finish? No. Can you leave? But, or like <laughs> with my partner now, we're so sexually in tuned that he knows fully well if I finish or not. And we don't lie about it. And he's like, you didn't come. Did you? He's like, no. And he's like, do you want to keep going? He's like, no, I'm fine. He's like, okay. And like we communicate about it, but I think it's harder when you're younger and you put all these pressures on yourself and you're building up sex in your head so much, especially if you saw like a lot of porn as a like a young mm-hmm. teenager, you know, that you think that you have to. And so it's harder for the younger people having sex to not lie about it. Please don't scratch me versus like older people that can get more in tune with their sexuality, their body and feel more confident to be like, yeah, hmm. You go into sex at a young age, like thinking that, okay, orgasm is, is it like, this is what sex is about. Like, this is the whole thing. So we need to, we need to shoot for uh, orgasm. And if we don't achieve it, then we haven't done it. Right. But see, I feel that <laughs> way about him. Like me, I don't give a flying fuck if I don't come. I really don't. Cause it's super enjoyable. But if like he cannot because he's on medication, he can last for fucking ever. And it's all in his head. If he decides to come, he'll come. If he doesn't, he doesn't. And then, but if he doesn't, I'm like, but you need to come. I need all the come. Like I need it somewhere in any Same. order, but I need it. No. Uh, well, Tiffany, you wanted to say there, something. Yeah. I'm a little unique on this because uh, my chain of orgasms as a pre-op, at least down there, trans woman is different. Sometimes I can go two times, uh, but usually I can't chain them. What I am good at is chaining other women's orgasms. I have very good stamina. I'm uh, not tiny, and I know the angles because I've been doing adult film for a long time, and I know uh, where the clit is, obviously. I'm not going down and, like, you know, those men who think the hood is the fucking clit. Uh, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Move! I, I know what angles work, and how their reactions are so if one angle is not good for them i readjust uh i'm flexible uh i my biggest problem is i like to make my partner's orgasm if i can i'm not going to kick myself too hard if i can't but i've rarely had like out of like the hundreds of people i've had sex with i think there's only like like i can count on one hand the people who haven't orgasmed with me so whenever, like, I don't succeed in giving them an orgasm, I feel like I kind of, like, let them down. But usually I, I just, uh, it, it's a good time. I just, like, chain their orgasms because, you know. And, you know what, it doesn't have to end there because a lot of times, uh, if for some reason I do come or uh, something like that, I have toys. I don't mind doing toys on them. Sometimes they'll throw on a strap on and, you know, peg me. They'll, like, plow me. And we'll do all sorts of fun. I, like, I get double-sided dildos. It's great. This it's a is great my time. favorite thing to yeah. hear. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I know how to use my fingers, my tongue. Uh, I don't have to even... Uh, oh. I'm not, like, boasting, but you can just look <laughs> it up. So... Like, that's um, I know. Do it. It. <laughs> no, you don't do it this way. I don't do that. I'm not going to, like, paw at your pussy like a goddamn cat. <laughs> that Hello. bothers me when I see that. Well, it freaks me out. <laughs> but there's people that go, like, they're There's like, like they're everything. playing the bongos. Some people like that. It's the same people who <laughs> think can't. you grab pussies. Um, <laughs> you know? So, and you flap tongue it. You don't pointy tongue it. <laughs> Since we're on the topic of orgasms, and I think, Klinger, you said your toy um, has an app that kind of like shows you the type of orgasm, right? Is that what you were describing? Yeah, basically. Well, some of the physiological sides of uh, orgasm. So primarily pelvic floor contraction of um, (laughs) either vaginally or anally. Ah, okay. Mm. So your toy is interchangeable. Do you have girls and guys toys? So it's one, so it's one shape right now. Um, Mm -hmm. But you can, because it's um, sort of rabbit style where you have the, uh, the clitoral nub outside, you can use it anally if you want to. It's not optimized okay. yet. Yeah. We want to get into details. 
<laughs> so what kind of like what have you like do, do you, i'm sure that you had a shit ton of research that went into this um like how did that idea even like come to you <laughs> i woke up one morning and was like i want to count my orgasms no um it was <laughs> uh, uh it was more well it was from basically prototyping it so initially we were going to make um like a product that was going to be more of a automated, like it could kind of figure out how someone was feeling and then sort of tailor the experience based on their own body and how they're reacting. Ooh. Yeah. Which sounds really cool. But the thing with that is like, once like a person, like once you figure out like what a person likes, like there's generally with like vibrators, it's like one or two settings that you mm-hmm. know are kind of go to, mm-hmm. it gets a lot less interesting. So we were like, okay, you know, we want to make something that's like easy to use, but what do we like, you know, is that really the the thing that we want to build towards? And what we found was like, we just threw in a question uh, when we were like, you know, doing our exit interviews with people on um, how, like, would you be interested in the data that is behind the vibrator? Since there's like a shitload of data and algorithms that go into like, how are you understanding like a, how a person's responding? And surprisingly for us, cause we were like, you know, are people interested in data about themselves? Like, or, you know, like for real, like data about their orgasms. It's like, people are like, yeah, I want to learn about my orgasms. Like, that's so cool. So that's, that's how we, you know, went more towards making this more data oriented vibrator that can show orgasms and show what your body is doing during primarily masturbation mm. that's really, really cool yeah that was yeah. really we interesting like definitely want to really look at some of that research right that's right really interesting. <laughs> yeah Absolutely. trying to see other people's research like what data I, did you I get on her like i want to show me your orgasm data people send it did to you them. send your <laughs> orgasm <laughs> notes <laughs> I'm going to connect this app to your app. Let's compare you. There you <laughs> let's, go. let's compare notes. I have, I have a question really quick for this is Klinger. I have a friend who's an app developer. So if there's any chance like you need someone else in there with there for you, you can hit me up. So. <laughs> Possibly. You can, you can DM me. <laughs> I just yeah. thought about the whole, I, I was about to do the same thing, but it's for, for the whole privacy of this information on said app. If you need somebody for that, hit me up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, um, how do I guess? Yeah, you can ask me any questions about that, but yeah, I will say that one of the things that I've gotten really excited about since, um, well, since we've had the product is that you, the coolest thing, in, in my opinion, is you could see how things like alcohol or cannabis or like different prescription medications, uh, can change your pleasure because like, I always had this question of like, you know, I feel different. Like if I'm, if I'm smoking weed or, you know, if I drink some alcohol or something, but is what I'm experiencing is what my body doing. Is that actually that different? And it turns out for, for some people it can be. Mm -hmm. So quick question. Um, so the, the original question was how common is it for women to lie about their orgasms. Branching off of that, how could guys make you more comfortable to be honest and share that you haven't gotten off? Because I feel like a lot of it stems from, again, not them maybe getting their ego bruised, uh, but then also some of it stems from, you know, like you're afraid how they're going to react. So are they just going to like not take no for an answer and just keep going and trying and be one of those persistent pain in the asses or are like how are they gonna handle it so what what could a guy say or do to make you more comfortable to share that info uh nico and then we'll come back to you jojo (laughs) you always talk jojo don't be mean to me (laughs) her face jojo you can go first it's okay i'll i'll piss in your drink if you if you're mean to me (laughs) careful he might like that Nico, go ahead and then I'll go. It's fine. Um, I'm sorry. Everyone's gonna have to take a shot if you're doing this, but communication. Just just be <laughs> with, your, with your partner, right? Like to me, I'm not afraid for someone to be like, 
yo, you're using teeth. Stop. Or, <laughs> yeah, no, same. where the fuck is your tongue? Like, I don't feel it. <laughs> like, where? Where? So yeah. For me, I think the nervousness comes from that communication portion of, well, I don't think she's going to like it if I do this or if I say this. Like, I need to, I need to know. Like, I want your cum. Get, l- let me know. How do I do that? <laughs> And obviously the question is is geared towards like what guys can do to make it more comfortable. I would say focus your line of questioning on the enjoyment of the act rather than the fi- the finale. So like when you're talking about um, no. the act itself, go, hey, did you have a good time? Did you enjoy? Um, was it good? Right? Like don't say, hey, did you come? Because right. that's, that's such a very specific thing that, you know what? Some women can't come just from vaginal penetration they do need clitoral stimulation or they need uh, you know to be stimulated mentally and physically so rather than ask them whether they got to the end of the road say hey did you have a good time did you enjoy it would you like to do it again would you like to have another go um and if they say yeah like if they said yeah i had a good time don't push the subject further and then go well did you come let it be right she said she had a good time because you can get to the end of the road and have a shitty ass walk. Yeah. Like, and you know yeah. what? Sometimes you can have sex and have really, really good, enjoyable sex without having an orgasm, and it's just as satisfying. Just don't, for the love of God, ask them while you're doing it. <laughs> don't put oh, them on yeah. the no, Oh my God. You can ask Nothing like, kills, like this? kills the mood more. <laughs> yeah, but like, Did no, you come but yet? going back to like the way you said it, you like, done yet? Did you come? Oh my God. Are we there like, yet? I'm definitely yeah. not going like to that? now. Thanks. When they act like they're like the hottest person ever in the fist at sex. And they're like, yeah, you like that? I'm like, that's my thought. <laughs> you know also, learn to read body language. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We can use a lot of body language during sex. We may not necessarily be saying I'm having a good time. We might be showing it, or you know, you, she might be angling you in a certain direction because that feels better. Like, just just be a little bit more um intuitive in your activity mm-hmm. I, I i feel like if everyone would just go into it with a curiosity especially if it's a new partner with a curiosity trying to figure out what makes that person tick and understand every single person is completely different in their likes and dislikes especially in the bedroom like especially in the bedroom so you you might be able to start out with something that's worked previously, but again, you got to be able to like read body language. You got to be able to communicate, and figure all that out. Yeah, of course, because every person gets into a new relationship or a new adventure mm-hmm. or a new one I stand. Like I always say, like trained, but it's obviously it's not the right word. But like you're 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 in you know the groove and the routine and whatever the previous person liked. You can't go about it any different way. You will come into a new sex session um, doing yeah, ultimately what the previous person liked. You can't, like, there's no default mode. Like, you will mm-hmm. always do it with the last person's likes. Yeah, I'm a so, lesbian, so I don't really have the issue with uh, having to worry about men performing. However, uh, communication is still key, because I'm with other women who are cis who will wear a strap on, or trans who are pre-op uh, or post off with a strap on, and they will ask me sometimes the same questions. Does this feel good? Because they're not used to anal penetration or something like that. Uh, so they're like, "Is this the right angle? Am I doing this right?" So the same problem can be had on the opposite side. Because you know, a lot of uh, cis women, especially, uh, haven't been with trans women, so a lot of them will also be kind of like how how can i make her feel good because i'm not i can't do what i usually do to you know women with vaginas so it's i don't know i just think it's fascinating that i can still sort of relate except from the opposite end where like someone has to wear like a fake dick or you know the trans uh and they they're just not used to doing that i feel like it's weird if you don't have that conversation beforehand unless well, you're just hooking up with someone but like having the conversation of what you're into like what you like you know like sometimes you can be like oh i like it Oh, low yeah. or something like well i do yeah, but that is you, you know in the heat of the moment people are inexperienced and you know strap-ons can sometimes uh loosen up or not like like be floppy so you're not like you're on the spot but then you miss it yeah, i like to put uh, a pillow under me because it helps angle so. yeah i meant like in general like 
figuring out what your partner wants and all that stuff like well um go ahead i was just gonna say it's because a lot of people just kind of assume that people aren't into kink right Mm -hmm. because it's not the norm so they'll just go into it assuming that you just like regular sex Mm -hmm. so they don't ask but also you can tell like it's not like if if the pro like I don't think it's only the uh, like the other person's job to ask, but you could also tell. Yeah, uh, See, but well, I mean that's what communication is, right? Exactly. <laughs> one one thing I always do if I am looking at sleeping with someone, I always broach the topic beforehand. What do you like and don't like in the bedroom? Right. I, th- right. I like. I feel like that should be a standard question everybody fucking asks. Your sex life will be dramatically fucking improved if you start right? doing that. So I actually want to ask a question though. Um, based on what you just said for sale. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of men don't feel comfortable asking that question. Why so, though? I, like I want to well, know wanna what the... makes you tick. I I want to. But you said, not all women want to answer that. that, and and not not all women yeah. feel like. So my question was going to be like if 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 you were talking to a guy on Bumble, and um, he <laughs> asked you what you were into. I know for a fact that there are like women that I know personally that would get offended by them asking them that question. And they would assume that the guy's just trying to get, you know, start sexting when he might genuinely be curious as to what that person's into to see if their likes line up, right? Yeah. And if there's so, a like, breaker. how yeah. do you guys feel about a guy asking you that question? I mean, like, Alex, it's all about context because usually when they ask me that, it's, pretty early on like same day same fucking hour 20 minutes into the conversation we just matched and then they get really weird like you know they're doing something you know what i mean it's not just i can have that conversation that regular conversation but then you know that they're trying to get there they're trying to have that text conversation like i can have that conversation no bro no bother you know what i mean but usually but i see what you mean like you can you can and i'm really big on I, I'm really big on on a dirty talk. Like I love that. That's usually what oh, will okay. get me there too. Um, so like it's normal for me to have that conversation before I even hook up with someone. Like, oh, like I like this, and like, what do you like? And like, I know for sale was uh, on Twitter the oh other day talking about empath. <laughs> on the the empath yeah. thing, I'm more of a giver. You know, like I'm gonna want to know what you like so I can give you the best experience. You know what I mean? And that's what I mm-hmm. I like to do. You know, so I was gonna yeah, I was gonna say like Tiffany, Denisha, I'd love to hear from as well. Like. You know, how do you feel when someone asks you what you're into? And like, if they, if you just met them on a dating app and it, you've had 15 minutes of conversation and they ask you, what were your thoughts, Jake? I mean, usually when I reach that, uh, that specific point, we're already in the bed. And I think when you're <laughs> about to fuck, now is a good time to ask your do's and don'ts. What do you like? What do you not like? All right, let's have a good time. Just messaging on a dating app, just rows and rows of men being like, hey, and then sometimes they don't even ask me what I'm into. They often will, but sometimes I'll just send dick pics. And uh, <laughs> so you know what they're trying to get at automatically. You know, it's kind of <laughs> disgusting. But uh, if you're if they're already in the bedroom with you, then I think it's fine to say, what are you into? Because I don't want <laughs> to bring someone in bed and then not have them ask me and then suck at sex. And I should have been like, oh, fuck, I should have told them to do this at the beginning. For sale, what are you, what are you, what are you giggling about? I'm sorry. But have, have dick pics, I, I answer this honestly, don't you fucking lie. Have, has a dick pic ever worked on you? No. Have you no, ever they always look like a stillborn like, frog. Oh, yes. no. The only reason <laughs> I would friend. ask for one is if I don't know what it looks like or size yet. If That's I'm interested. Yeah. yeah, but these are, I'm talking about people who like send it without asking permission. They're just like, Dick! yeah, 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 yeah. One of the biggest Please. things that I find on dating apps is that they'll <laughs> it'll they'll be like, hey, do you have Snap? And I'm like, yeah, but if you send me a picture, I'm gonna screenshot it, put googly eyes on it, and like post it on the internet. So don't. Um, <laughs> also, like, well, it's that's like really the that first that. thing they do. Send that picture at. <laughs> It almost always goes straight to like let's send nudes to each other once you get to Snapchat. Yeah, I feel like Snapchat's no. where where the relationship actually, goes to die. Like, I actually mm-hmm. do not have sexual conversations on Snapchat. If someone goes to Snapchat from a dating app for me, we have real conversations, and I rarely ever get nudes from these people. Snapchat streak where I just send you pictures of my cats. Yes, you can do that, Cloud. <laughs> um, <laughs> Denisha, I would love to hear from you as well as far as like how you feel if someone you know 
was very straightforward and quick to ask you what you were into? Uh, I would be very impressed. A lot of people that I meet like to beat around the bush, and I think that's kind of annoying. And I've yeah. always gotten shit for being so upfront. People say I'm blunt. I've actually been called oh. a bitch because I be blunt. asked yeah. the guy, hey, like, what, what are we trying to do? Like, what's going on? Do you like this? You like this? And I've actually been in relationships where I've I've told the guy, hey, I don't mind, like, teaching you all this stuff that I would love. And they've gotten really upset. Like, well, you don't have to teach me anything. Like, I got it. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my fucking God. Yeah, so... Like I said, I would be very impressed if a guy was like, hey, what are you into? Like, let's be upfront about this. That's awesome, though. Like, I did that with with a, with a woman. Like, it, it works in every context. I mean, it doesn't even have to be just relationships. I mean, I was, I call it unicorning, I guess, with my friend mm -hmm. and her husband. And she's like, oh, like, it was a disaster last time. And, like, I'm really not sure I know what I'm doing. So we went into it where I knew that I was going to teach her. Like I knew like that was set up ahead of time and that's what it was going to be. And that's what it was. And it was awesome because she's like, okay, like she wasn't feeling bad about it. And if I like redirected her or whatever, or, or told her something like it was very well taken because it was set up ahead of time. I was going to say, I know a lot of it always comes back down to communication, but I also understand that everyone's at a point where they feel like they can communicate. And I think, you know, part of the reason why people won't do that or get embarrassed about it is that some people are still, you know, not fully educated on sex or the spectrum of sex or that there's kinks and there's different things to be into so they see sex as kind of like a universal uniform thing or it's like why would you be asking me you should just know isn't it just sex well and of course there's more layers to that like as you explore your sexuality but i think some people may be like sexually re repressed in the sense that they haven't gotten the chance to explore what they actually like or get to have those conversations and so they get embarrassed and then they kind of close up so you should know, but I don't know. I feel like one of the things that I, maybe it's because I'm in the kink lifestyle. I don't know if anybody else is in the lifestyle. Oh, N Nico. Is. I am too. Be because, okay. So I feel like people in the lifestyle have these conversations from the get-go. Like if you match with me and you see that I'm kink friendly, the first thing you're going to ask me is like, what are your kinks? So that mm -hmm. we know whether we should continue this line of conversation or if we should just move on and not waste each other's time, right? Because, like, if I'm a sub and then you're a sub too, that's not going to work out. Um, I know that a few of the people that are in the lifestyle always say this, like, when they're on the panel, it's, it's I genuinely feel that we tend to be better at communicating just because we have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially if you want your needs met. Yeah. I remember I had to straight, explain to my straight male friend what a bottom was because he was talking about like my experience with another girl and i was like no you don't understand i'm a bottom and he goes yeah but why don't you just i was like no 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 no, no. i'm a bottom <laughs> <laughs> there are roles which we assume yeah i'm not gonna come in there all right, right? and like he's like but she's hot i was like i know she's hot that's why i'm a bottom <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah. I top with women, but I bought them to, to like, I, I cannot be a dom to a man. So, I like, I had been same. every time you said something I like, so I could just, like, <laughs> indicate. So, <laughs> so, if a guy, like, came, like, if I, I match with guys all the time, and they're like, oh, I want you to, like, you know, uh, tie me up and like spit on me and i'm like i'm sorry that's just not my I thing right like i i i'll do it to a girl but but not to you you're supposed to be doing that to me so yeah, like i'm the important. exact same way <laughs> just, the just exact to make sure I heard same you way yeah you said you would do it to a girl yes i'm the same way for different reasons uh i i top women when i have to work with men i bought them for men i don't like topping men because mm -hmm. i'm trans so it's a dysphoria thing it makes mm -hmm. like if a guy wants to fuck me that's fine. Whatever. I'm the woman. I, you know, treat me like a feminine, throw me on the bed, whatever. But if a guy wants me to fuck them, that I'm very uncomfortable with that. And mm -hmm. I, I don't like to do it, you know? Uh, but with women, to me, it's just like lesbian play, uh, versatile. Usually I'm the designated mm -hmm. top, but sometimes I'll, I'll flip for the bottom, but there's no dysphoria there. <laughs> so yeah, that's, I think that's why it's important to have yeah. conversations. I have to give it JoJo. Like, I feel like if I were to be with a woman, I would want to be in control. But like, when I'm with a man, I like to get thrown around. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, I have a viewer asking uh, Cloud 
how does top and bottom work with women? I can explain only for my situation. I can't for other women and their experiences. For me, being a bottom is I'm more of the submissive type, a receiver. I mean, I'll give two, but I want to be dominated. I want my female partner to be on top of me and, you know, taking the lead with things like tell me what you want me to do and I'm going to do it. But that's just for me and my experience. That sounds about right. I feel like. uh, Wait, what do you mean sounds about right? No, I was just going to say, for like, for me, for like, with women, I just naturally take the top position and it's not, it has nothing to do with like, it's just, I feel submissive to men and with women, because I feel like we're on more even playing ground and I just have a very strong personality, I end up being the top. Same, same, which is why it's so weird for me to want a man to dominate me because of how strong my personality is. But when I'm with a guy, especially, like, if the guy is bigger than me, I'm like, dude, no way I'm going to fucking throw you on the bed. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, hold on, I got to lift with my legs. Give right? Me a like, you want me to fucking do a wrestling game, RKO carry. you into the bed? Like, come on, bro. <laughs> this, like, only one guy I've not been with, like, we just... When I was in Fort Worth, I'm in, I'm in Houston, but when I was in Fort Worth, I was on Bumble and me matched. Um, but he's the only one who's ever wanted me to dominate him and i was kind of i'm kind of into it when it's with i don't know with him i don't look to be like a dominant person with men but like he was into he had like a lot of kinks like he wanted to be pegged he had like a foot fetish he had like this mommy son fetish like but i went like those aren't my things but i went i go with them sometimes you know like when he you know, when we're having a little spicy talk, you know, and like, <laughs> sometimes talk. I'm into it, sometimes little, little I'm not. Talk. Yeah, but I don't know, like, that's the only one. I, but also, I've never done this and I've been wanting to just because I know it's so good for men, but like a prostate massage. Oh, but honey, some men, it. I want to, but men are like, fuck no. And I'm like, it's literally science. That's your fucking Hi. spot. Uh, so, so <laughs> I. <laughs> So this is for anyone that's listening, right? Start off light. Get yourself a little bullet vibrator. Do not go near the butthole. Just put it near the perineum, right? Put some pressure near the perineum. And just feeling that vibration that's going to like actually resonate to towards our prostate, they're going to feel that pleasure. And I, f- I guarantee they're going to be a little bit more um, open up, willing open to, it. To, so, like, to explore. I date white guys. They're my type. And I feel like they're <laughs> much more conservative. Um, and I've been told, like, I've asked before, like, oh, like, are you into, like, me, you know, like, eating, eating your ass and shit? And they're like, no. And I do it anyway. <laughs> uh, but I work up to it. I work up to it. And they're like, they, con- like, one of them, the I think one of the first guys I did it to, he would always ask me for it. At, like, all the time. He would do me a favor. And he'd be like, okay, can you eat my ass now? And I'm like, I- <laughs> you see, I told you. I told you. That's um, wonderful. But like I, I don't just do it. I like you know I'm giving them a head and I work down to it a little bit and then it just boop like you know just a little bit and they're like freaking like boom there's and like, then it's like well there's like, the power the radio radio off of you right like now. In, oh. There are much more nerve endings in the like in in the anus. Um, the the nerve concentration is really uh, high, which is why um, anal stimulation is so pleasurable for both genders mm-hmm. um or sexes genders yeah. either way people like their butt played with because there's more nerve yeah. endings there and i'm, it I'm not good. into it but i love doing it to guys and like the the last one that i was with a couple days ago he he said uh, he texted me he said that he he felt like i sucked the life out of him <laughs> okay. i love giving Alrighty head then. i love giving head like <laughs> sorry i just had to put that in there but yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> in response to Denicia, uh, I think one of the reasons, because I also have a very strong personality, the reason we kind of, at least this is in my opinion, want to get like, you know, tossed around once in a while is because we're like with other women, we're so busy being like the top and dominant for most of the time that once in a while you're just like, I need to, to switch. I just need a break. Just someone plow me. And you see this a lot uh, in uh, the king community, especially the uh, dominatrix stuff where uh, rich, powerful men that control people's lives every day will pay a dominatrix to be treated like a meek nobody because they're so used to having power that they want to kind of switch the dynamic. And I feel like that's the same situation. Uh, furthermore, this is just a fun little thing, but if you get unsolicited dick pics and you want to have fun because I'm a wise ass just like when they send a picture of their dick just type 
what do you, what is this a baby dick? Why are you sending me child porn? I'm gonna report you. And they get so mad. It's hilarious. Oh my god, I'm doing that next. <laughs> Say less. Next topic here is how do you feel about abstinence education being the only thing taught in some schools? It's not gonna happen. Oh. No, not every no. student's gonna be abstinent. Yeah, it's a disaster waiting to happen. So, there can't be on. abstinent. Oh, sorry. Uh, these 11 states require only the abstinence is covered during sex education. You ready for Guarantee this? Guarantee half of them in the South. California. Ooh. Colorado. Hawaii. Maryland. Uh, Minnesota. Montana. New Mexico, North Dakota, Vermont, Virginia, and West Virginia. Not Texas. There's a, there's a website, thought, <laughs> thoughtco.com, and it covers uh, sex education, and it, and it talks about, it breaks it down, like, per state, which ones require sex and or HIV education. Um, most include uh, thoughtco.com, and there's a section for sex education now. I'm very surprised to hear that California and Hawaii yeah. is on that right? list. That Me blows too. my mind. Like, what the hell? You all so, are like liberal progressive yeah. states. North Carolina. Yeah. Well, there, North there are rural California. areas in California that are red, but the majority of the state is blue. Blue. Yeah. Very much so. That's right. Yeah, if I roll my eyes any harder at abstinence education, I'm going to go blind. Yeah. <laughs> my eyes hurt now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the the whole point of just telling people not to do something doesn't mean they're not going to do it. Not to mention the amount of failure you're setting up all these children for. Yeah. Pregnancies, mm -hmm. STDs, issues with consent alone. Because mm -hmm. they're not being taught any of this stuff. Also, sexual Absolutely. repression. Like, uh, if you're taught don't orgasm or, like, have sex with people, you're going to bottle that up. There's a lot of angsty young teens who are uh, logging on the pole, expressing their anger that they can't, you know, be with a woman. It's a detriment in every possible conceivable way, and it's been proven not to help but hinder. So anyone that's for it either doesn't know about absence education, they just think it sounds good, or they're really, really stupid. The states with the highest teenage pregnancy rates? Mississippi, Arkansas, <laughs> yep. Texas, Louisiana, Arizona. So like oh the my god, this five. all makes sense. Yeah, right? This makes so much sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you look at all those statistics and those rates, yeah. Mm -hmm. Highest teen pregnancy rates, no sex education. Hmm. Crazy. Weird how so, that works. <laughs> so, by wow. the way, the, the California thing, California actually says that you can only discuss abstinence during sex education, not that you can only have sex, like abstinence only education. That's why I was like, that cannot be. Because California is like liberal as fuck. Yeah. I was going to say, that's how it is in Washington. So yeah. our teacher, like our health teacher, we have it for different times throughout high school, obviously elementary school and middle school too. But she was very clear and very open about, she's like, I have to. That's what she said. I have to teach you about abstinence, but we will be going across yes. like all the other material. Because she wanted us to be safe. She had genuine concern for us. So she mm. was very transparent and letting us know that, you know, by law, she had to teach us about abstinence education. But of course, you know, there was more stuff supplemented with that. Could you imagine being kinky in <laughs> Mississippi? <laughs> or Louisiana? You know what? Okay. I don't what like where my mind went for Mississippi. Funny enough, uh, Texas has a lot of swinger clubs, and I've been to a lot of really? them. Really? Yeah. And, well, yeah. And into marriages, and they're not happy. There was a rich couple. I did a YouTube video on this recently. There's a rich couple that I went to uh, their mansion. They're in the, big in the king community. They had 200 people there, 100 plus couples, at least 200 people in their mansion. They and it was like a a huge fuck fest. It was amazing. It's it's really difficult in certain states, but like in big states even even conservative big states there there is a community um in most of them like i loved the community when i lived in dc and most people would think dc is full of you know stuck up uh politicians and yes they are and they all go to very private clubs to go have fun um so so even in the conservative areas like once you get into the middle of the country and you're looking at like arkansas and nebraska those places don't really have a lot of community but for the most part um even the conservative states have their the little red light dark seated corners of kink see and i i 
I almost feel like so who who here has watched Handmaid's Tale? Has anyone watched Handmaid's Tale? On I cannot yeah. make it through. <gasps> what? Oh, I haven't watched it's, it. It's, it's pissing me off. I I keep trying to watch it and it just makes me angry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does. And I don't want television to make me angry. <laughs> but it's such a good show. Like it, such it's scary. Show. It's. It like it it reminds me of things uh like keep playing out the way they do and they're allowed to keep playing out the way they do that's how it could get like that's a possible reality yeah it's it's very good uh anti-conservative propaganda because uh conservatives are terrible people <laughs> and uh this could happen mm-hmm. if they get their way Jojo, you were going to say something? I, I'm looking for it before I say something. I saw an article oh, okay. today with like legislation that's extremely restrictive that was just passed in a very conservative state. Um, oh. And I want to pull it up because it's it's all geared towards like women's health. So I personally feel like sex education should be taught like thorough, comprehensive sex education, including covering like LGBT sex ed, um, covering trans covering everything i i honestly feel like uh once you reach the age of like high school or college they should even include stuff about uh pleasure and stuff like how like what parts of the body are the have the most nerve endings and provide the most pleasure and blah 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 and just cover all that kind of stuff um the problem is i think Part of the reason they don't want to do that and why they fight back against it so hard is if everybody had comprehensive sex education, I think that would be the end of religion. That would be it, wonderful. Well, and th- really- that those are the same people trying to stop comprehensive sex education are the religious people. Religion is a dying doing everything thing behind anyway. it. It's one of the uh it's one of the driving reasons we don't have it. Yeah, religion is dying. And and what what you see is um religion trying to grab onto whatever it can and the more it feels like it's dying the louder it gets and they start Uh, playing up the scare tactics mm -hmm. so the more educated people become the less religious they become there's actually like studies that have been done that the more people are educated the less religion they are religious they are so so we just gotta keep educating and people just have to keep learning about these things so that they can figure things out for themselves Mm mm-hmm Right. Anyone else for that topic? For <laughs> move on. I don't know. It's just crazy. Like sex is in everybody's lives. Like yeah, it's, it's normal. It's healthy. It's, it's normal. It's, it's like a period. Like here. we get it. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's yeah, exactly. It's just crazy that they shun it so much. Like uh, yeah, everyone's gonna have sex. You know, like yeah, it's crazy. So it it really confuses me that sex is treated worse. I feel like than guns, violence, drugs, everything else on TV. Sex is treated like the redheaded stepchild and like shunned from all <laughs> not the way i watch it <laughs> <laughs> like i know a lot of uh families that'll bring their kids to see like john wick or something but then uh they won't take them to see uh, a movie where there's like a nip slip somewhere in there or uh, our priorities are ass backwards here in america i also think uh what for sale said was based on all the education, especially in college, when you're taught how to actually please people, that kind of education will not just make sex safer for everyone, but it'll also make people's sex lives more fulfilling and happy. Yeah, I guess one thing to add here, I think something that's interesting to think about is like, yeah, I think a lot of, or a lot of us minus the like religious people are like, oh, you know, sex is important. Sex is something that we should talk about Mm -hmm. at some point. But I think um, like if you start looking at where or where not those conversations are starting, it's still really difficult. (laughs) Cause like in, like in the media, like there are certain words that you can't say, um, Mm -hmm. you know, or else you get charged for it. Like I can't go onto the news and like talk about orgasms all day because you know, they'll be charged like what, like 250 grand or something. Every time I say orgasm on TV, you know, on like mainstream TV. Mm -hmm. Insane to me. Yeah. And then also um, in the research space, it's, it's a, Oh my God, it's really interesting where like there's different researchers who are looking at topics related to, to sexual function, to sexuality, the sex education, the in the whole gamut. And depending on who the so depending on who's approving the research to be passed, 
if you have even like one person on there, like, you know, a chemistry PhD or, you know, chemistry professor, physics professor, something like unrelated, who's like, I'm not comfortable with this topic. I'm, you know, I don't think it's academically important or of value, then they can Mm -hmm. completely shut down a researcher's work, which is Mm -hmm. ridiculous. So it's like all like in every single vertical almost, you know, like with media, with marketing, with research, it's, it's really hard to get that conversation to break through to people who, you know, to like the, you know, mass, the masses who aren't like already thinking and talking about this stuff every day. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I feel like a lot of it is because we don't also don't realize what our profanity, profanity laws are in the U S and they're actually very, very strict. Um, I, I know a, an adult store owner that's trying to open a store in a city in Louisiana I mean, let's be honest, Louisiana is known for women flashing their tits for beads, right? But this this person cannot um, open a store where they really don't, they, they sell more of the higher end toys because it goes against their profanity laws. Um, adult toy um, companies have a hard time finding funding and loans and all of these things because our U.S. federal laws have like basically targeted it and called it an unsafe um industry uh which yep. is why there's very little respect for the industry even though there's people like Klinger who are doing legitimate research and um sex educators who are literally educated in all of this stuff um it still looks down on in every way and yeah, it comes like- from the government as well <laughs> We, we got walked out of at least of, of one bank just trying to open up a bank account because of what we do. <laughs> and yeah, that's you sell a I'm, toy. Yeah, and that's everyone who started anything with anything with sex stuff in general. Like you get, it, you know, you get no's and you get turned away every step of the way. It's mm-hmm. amazing. And, you know, it's amazing how much people don't know about it until, you know, we, we start talking about this stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it literally makes like zero sense because in order to have a baby, right, you, have you to have need sex. to do the sex thing. So, that's not true. Right. You need to have that baby. kids by this Only age. God. No, no that, sex. That is the main thing they're concerned about, right? That's I think that's part of the reason they don't provide sex education is because they want the birth rates high. And if if you notice, you're starting to see more and more documentation and more and more articles about how the birth rates have fallen so low that they're starting to worry now. Yeah, because we're all broke and we don't want to have kids. Exactly. Yeah. 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 If they want to blame someone, blame uh, the capitalists and the elites who designed the dog. system to be this way. Working ridiculous hours so you can't even, uh, that you barely have enough time to sleep before you're right back. Working five days a week. It's uh, hard to even like muster up energy to go out sometimes and meet people let alone just have the time in general and then saving up so you can have a kid to support a family it makes zero fucking sense and if you work a a low-end job you don't have a 15 dollars minimum wage it's gonna be even harder especially if you have like a kids or a single mom how are you supposed to uh, raise your child on like seven dollars and like 25 cents you can't it's impossible prices have kept rising despite the minimum wage remaining stagnant so they ha- it's a problem with the system we have to fix. Yeah. If they want to fix birth rates, don't try and force people to have sex <laughs> by fucking tricking them. Fix your goddamn country. So so one of the things that I find curious about all of it is because, you know, it's very woman-centered, right? We're the ones that carry children. Um, so we have a problem with birth rates going down, but we also have a problem with, um, you know, people... So So women can't get birth control. In a lot of states, because you know, birth control means you're gonna hoard out. And Damn right, <laughs> I am the fuck. But then, but then, you know, Hair? you don't get birth control. But then, let's say you get pregnant or you get raped, or you know, you you you're not meant to have that child because of health issues. But you can't get an abortion either. Um. So then, you know, so now you have this child, or you have a stillborn, or all this other mm-hmm. horrible thing. That can happen. I just want you to pump out babies. Yeah, but uh, once you have the kid, you can't afford to keep the child. Mm-hmm. And then, if the child goes into the system, um, God forbid, uh, using the term "God" very loosely because I don't believe him, um, that child is completely screwed over because we don't have the funding to keep these children in the system. So and then you're you know, a bad mom for giving yeah, it up. 
you yeah. know, you're an mm-hmm. awful person, but if you would have let me had birth control, I wouldn't have had this kid that's now in the system. Right, so but then they tell you to just close your legs, and then you wouldn't have right. had the child. But then which you is shouldn't wrong. have had sex, right? Yeah. But they they tell you to close your legs, but they still want to increase uh, birth rates. It, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It's yeah. like the mm-hmm. stupidities compounding on each other. These How- well, that shit has always like denial that we have sex for pleasure. Like, obviously, so- we do that. <laughs> Not to make this a political stream, but a lot of the conservative arguments, if you notice, contradict themselves. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah, they're so the fucking time. stupid. <laughs> yeah, the absolutely. It's absolutely. so bad. Yeah, just about but, to... Go ahead. No, you, you can go ahead. Oh, that, but, but they don't have, like, the cognitive dissonance to be able to be like, oh, wait, <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, right, Big critical thinking yesterday. skills don't exist, and that's uh. That's be so easy coasting through life, not even knowing you're dumb. <laughs> like, you know, sometimes I wish I had that. I just live in that fantasy world of I'm never wrong. Where you just say things, and you're. I like, mean, I'm not, hey. but still. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, it just Facts always and fucks data. me up. Need that. How people oh, are oh, like. Hold on. Hold on, on Denisha. Oh. Go ahead. Oh. oh no, I'm supposed to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. It just always <laughs> fucked me up how um they're always like, uh, you, you know, having a kid, fine, have a kid whenever you can. And as soon as you get your period, have mm-hmm. that kid. But if you decide to do whatever it takes to support that kid, uh, then we're kind of like, no, mm-hmm. like you, you got to work that nine to five. You got to not see your child grow up. So, you know, it makes us feel better. It, it doesn't make any sense. Like, um, the mother should have everything she fucking needs to support <laughs> this goddamn population. Like, it makes no sense. How are we not giving the mother whatever? Like, uh, it's dumb. Well, in other me. countries, both parents get leave. Maternity mm-hmm. and paternity. Yeah. What about, like, like, up to six months? So, so the other one that I think is hilarious, right, is... Um, okay, so you've had this child that you really couldn't afford to have, so you you are now doing sex work because That's what I was sex work pays. But now you're a bad parent because you're being a whore. And in some uh, cases, you're, you're a, sex work. Sex work. it's illegal too, so you're breaking the law. I had mm-hmm. someone tell me that. Um, I was like, I will do anything. I don't have any kids for anyone. Hi, I'm Turtle, everybody. I don't have any kids. Hi, <laughs> but I, I always said I will do anything to provide for my child that means robbing a bank that means doing absolutely everything i can and this person looked at me and she was like why don't you just become a stripper i said i tried that already i I can't fit that okay so i will rob a bank and she goes i will never rob a bank even if my child is hungry i was just like fuck that good I for would. you <laughs> it's like i guess like burn that starving. shit to the ground <laughs> It's well, like whether you're a stripper a that won't help you yeah you're Please a stripper you're an escort like your prostitute you fucking work two, three jobs and you don't get to see your kid. Like, even if you do it, the, like, you're actually working minimum wage. You're a shit mom because, oh, you're not there for your kid. Mm-hmm. When you're, like, yeah, it's like, um, why don't you raise your child properly? You mean it, the small amount of time I have with my child because I'm working so much to keep my child alive and we're barely scraping by? The more we talk about this, the more I realize <laughs> how fucked that system is. It's, it's a whole, know. yeah, it's a system and it keeps repeating. <clears throat> Because Why then you're not you with your kid, me? and then they're not being educated. Studies show that if I'm... you're poor, chances are that your children will You'll also remain poor, poor mm-hmm. and vice mm-hmm. versa. It's generational. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, Nico. Which is why I'm scared. Yeah, I was to say, it gets even worse, hypocritical, if you want to see how worse it is. Because my family does foster care. So we've seen how horrible women are treated. Because my mom will go in and use WIC, and they will be jerks to us until we drop that we're foster parents. And then all of a sudden, we're saviors. So wow. using the service when it's someone else's kid, perfectly fine. If it was our kid, though, they wanted to treat us like shit. And they've done the same to me when I've gone to stores to buy things for my brothers. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they're not my kids. They're my foster brothers. Because I say that because they don't, want it. they don't want to associate me as their sister. And I respect that. So I let people know so they don't mislabel them. And then all of a sudden, they're nice to me. So it's even more fucked up because us using the service is okay, but not well, actual that's... parents. Well, it's another Mm. thing about that on, like, foster parents, they're like, oh, wow, you're doing this. But if you're a foster kid, they're like, wow, you must be fucked up. As a foster kid, that's what I got of, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, what did your mom do? It was always, what did your mom do? Wow. Praise the parents, but, like, shit on the child that got put into that system, right? Wow. Uh, Nico, go ahead. I just like, I know this is probably a little off topic, but I just like to say, like, I don't understand. To me, it's just like, as someone who has birth, like, 
two brain cells. <laughs> Why are we being told what to do with our bodies? I, that's, like, I don't understand what's ro- so wrong with me not wanting children and what's so wrong with someone else wanting children. And because what's so it doesn't wrong fit with, them. <laughs> like, like, to me, it's just, you're not pushing the child out. Would you like to push a watermelon out? Because I don't. But if you would love to and you want you want five of them, please, by all means, like, I would love to love on your little children. Like, I love kids. But I don't want to, I don't want one. So why am I forced to being, like, I get, I get, shit for for not wanting kids and then all of a sudden i get shit for thinking kids are cute and it's like what do you want from me <laughs> like <laughs> you're just you're giving me like a whole bunch of doesn't make sense and then you get mad at us when we are confused as you are yeah well, and people go so far as to invalidate you as a woman when you don't want kids so like no mm-hmm. you'll change your mind when you're older no your yeah. time's running out like how yeah. dare you oh god just yeah. accept my you? answer that i said no children and yeah. leave it at that don't say what about your partner my partner doesn't get that choice if they yeah, want to have kids they can go find a new partner to have children with i'm 38 mm-hmm. i'm not changing my mind like this isn't this isn't my turning point where i'm gonna go all of a sudden yes i would like to push a human out of my observer <laughs> Not I only don't. that, but then they'll judge you for not being the best mom to them. Or, or like, yeah. oh, why'd you wait so long? Oh, so now you're going to have kids as an old person. Like, mm-hmm. there's never a good time. I mean, right? and then they always rule out I'm... adoption, too. You can only have a biological child. So even if you change your mind and that kid's adopted, they're like, oh. Unless like, no, you're, you you're gay your or own? trans, then you can't have an adopted child mm-hmm. in some places. One of my biggest pet peeves is fucking people getting in other people's business. Like, you're literally, you would never know who I am. Like, what does it matter to you? Like, you know, when they pass laws about like abortion and all and birth control, like you're a fucking man. You'd never know who I am. If I have a kid or not, it doesn't, you would never know. It wouldn't affect you in any way. So why does it matter to you? Like if any of these choices that I'm having that I make, like, it- yeah, exactly. I think Nico is right. I think we have to take a lot of these uh, conservative policymakers when it comes to delivering anti-abortion law, and we should have each one of them lube up a watermelon and shove it right up their ass, and then we can see if uh, they still want to make the same I just, legislation. I just had a really yes. mean thought, and I yes. just thought to myself that all of these like anti-abortion politicians are probably trying to do it because they know that their parents probably wouldn't have wanted them. When, like, when guys ask me if I want to do anal for it ever be, I'm like, let's fucking put something up your butt first. And then if you're, if you're okay with that, then we can do it with me. Like, <laughs> that's a good uh, trade off. Like, anal oh, the TikTok. <laughs> but, like, guys just think, like, only women can do it. Like, only they can fucking put a dick in your butt or something. Like, you're the one scientifically who has that spot is going to be better for you. You know what I mean? If I'm not into it, we're going to try and force it on me. If you want to try it? <laughs> do you want to try it? Like, I'll try it, but you try it first. Like, if I tell you I can't do that yet, don't be trying to convince me. Like, Yeah, I've never liked a guy who wants me to do anal with him, but will never, like, make like let me do anal to him. I've never liked that. It's like, butt is butt, so what's the... Just what's going on? Exactly. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> To be fair, I don't like, uh, like I said, I don't like <laughs> topping guys, but the butts are also oh. way grosser than women's, in my opinion. Oh. Uh, I, I mean, un- unless you're like a like a gay a guy memory. or something, you don't. They don't clean out very well. They're usually okay, flat. They are usually Everyone, hairy. Guys, All right. Guys. Ugh. All right. Uh, next topic here, uh, because it's nine oh two, and we got to wrap up here soon. Um, ladies, how often? <laughs> Uh, how often do you meet other women and the second you talk to them, you're like, nope, you know, something's off and don't want to meet them ever again. What are some of those... I love with all the women I meet here every time. (laughs) What what are some of those signs? Well, yeah, because usually, like, sex-positive people are open-minded and a a little more (laughs) accepting of other people, you know? But, like, what what are some of those signs that come off that you're like, oh, hell no. What we were just going over. If they're like, oh, hi, I'm a conservative Christian soccer mom that likes to talk about my kids nonstop and have never uh, never had any life experience in kink or anything like that nope sorry i i just 
nah, I don't. I don't like to associate myself with uh, people who actively vote politicians in that want me to not exist as a human being. Um, for me, it's actually people that are very polar in their views, right? So they're either very, very conservative or very, very liberal because, um, and, and they're closed minded. So like, I'll get like, you know, to use the example, I love scrolling through dating apps and it'll be like, no meat eaters, no smokers, no this. And it's just like, everything's a no rather than saying like, this is what I'm looking for. Um, that kind of negativity and that polarization just doesn't do it for me. Cause I'm, I'm very much a, like a moderate when it comes to my views. Um, so I'm very willing to listen to both sides of people's views. And when I like meet people that are just like, well, this is how it is. And I, you know, anyone who doesn't agree with me is wrong. Um, that's a, like a big no for me. And that goes for men as well. Um, however, generally I'm like an intuition person. So like there's women that I meet and uh, they just don't rub me the right way. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so it just never I'm like I'm, I meet them once and, and um, you might meet them at a party or something and, and you have a conversation, but you know that this is somebody that you you'll meet in passing and never really form anything fruitful with. Nick, Nico, Nico. Um, I, I think for me, it's when, so I don't care what you believe in, if you believe in what I believe in. I think when it comes to girls and knowing who I vibe with, it's those who can understand that I'm different or that people are different and that people have mm -hmm. their own preferences and can still respect you as a fucking human being. Yes. Because the moment you tell me yeah but what about this it, or do you start to try and change me as a person like no i'm never gonna take these ears off no i'm <laughs> not, not gonna like anal no i like this and that like to me when a girl when i when i meet another person or a girl that is like oh but yeah like that's really that's cool but like and then i'm like uh, -uh no no <laughs> <laughs> No, like just ex just accept it we're not the yeah. same and it doesn't have to like affect anything like exactly. exactly as as long as you aren't pushing those beliefs onto the other person and trying to change them and just kind of like accept them as a person mm -hmm. like the way they are is the way they are you either like them or you don't yeah <laughs> that's like my biggest pet peeve is when people are just like my way is the better way and this isn't right and I mean, uh, like, there's... no, no, but my way is the better way. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, it's mine. <laughs> I mean, there, there's, there's like some things that are non-negotiable for me, like uh, science? rights. Yeah, science, uh, rights for LGBT folks, uh, fucking uh, anti-racism, all that shit. Like, those are non-negotiables for me. Yeah, I would say the same. Yeah, just no, treat, no. People, don't be a treat people as fucking people. Like, just exactly. be a decent yeah. being. We're all just yeah. fucking people. Just yeah. <laughs> Who else? Anyone else? That's pretty much. What, uh, some... what was the question again? Oh. Go ahead, Turtle. <laughs> oh, meeting other women. Okay. Pretty much. Um, I was just gonna say the same thing. Like, anyone who's trying to change me, like, no, that's a big no. I'm not changing for anybody. Never. <laughs> Um, other than that, like, I guess one of the things, mostly women, I don't click with mostly women. Um, I've always hung out with guys. I was tomboyish. Now I'm more girly than I am back in the days. But, um, <laughs> like one thing for sure, and it goes for both men and women, but like, if you're straight, just manipulative, like, like, oh, I'm just doing this just because I want this or just because I want to see them like suffer. Oh, like, yeah. no, that shit. I'm just like, dude, cut that shit out. Like, no. I don't mind, like, meeting other women if we don't have, like, hobbies that exactly line up. I don't really care about that kind of stuff. We Everyone has their differences, and, you know, a lot of people uh, can relate to certain things and can't. There's just some fundamentals that 
uh, I ha have to be met that are like automatic no's. Like if you're anti-LGBT, for example, uh, there's, there's no way I want to have anything to do with you. It's really uh, bigotry that is a huge turnoff for me. I've never, I was lucky enough never to have like people try to change me. Uh, I think I had one ex out of like a bunch uh, that tried to change me, but she was kind of like an abuser anyway. So uh, it was a bad idea to even associate with her. So now I, I just look out for those signs and just try to stick with cool, chill people like everyone on this panel. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. I don't know if anybody else is. Oh, Cloud, go ahead, honey. I was going to say people that are dumb and make it a point to not educate themselves. Oh, like they, are the worst. they build their personality off of not knowing anything and think it's cute and funny and I want to throttle them. Like, <laughs> just have a conversation with me. You don't have anyone here to impress. Like, I'm cool. Or, <laughs> like, the extremes. I can't, like JoJo was mentioning, like, everyone that wears fur is murder. Everyone that eats meat is a murderer. Or, it's only God, my way, or you're going to hell. Or people, like, I think currently what's really frustrating is i'm a pretty liberal person but when people start fitting into that i think now it's become a joke of social justice warriors or wokeism and they're nitpicking every little thing and then try to explain to me my own sexuality or my own gender identity or my own experiences of being a part of those communities and then mm -hmm. tell me what all these travesties and i'm like i'm sorry i didn't realize that you a straight cis person have all of a sudden come into this and know what's what and can tell me what's what about my sexuality and all these things that's my new thing where i'm like i can't sorry if you you gotta let other people speak on their issues support them give them a platform but you don't get to be the end to be all in that conversation and police everybody and those kind of people are the ones who take it so much more offensive if you try to push well, they're virtue them. signaling. They just yeah. want the praise of being an ally, but yeah. not do anything to actually sub legitimately support yeah. these people. I don't the even think that's like that. That's like limited to just like you know LGBT or anything like that. Like I'm yeah. Hispanic. Everybody. Don't advocate on my behalf. Don't tell me not to make like you know jokes about being Hispanic and things like that. Because guess what? We fucking find them funny. Okay. Taco Tuesday said no one ever. Come on. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah. Like that whole like crazy, like, and it's, I'm sorry, it's usually white people that are like out there going, like, you offend a Hispanic person. And we're like, are you Hispanic? No, I'm white. It's like, okay, shut the fuck up because I'm not offended. That was the awkward reality of growing up as a mixed kid because my mom's Mexican and my dad's white. Okay. So I had, I had to code switch a lot. <laughs> so obviously, I'm very pale. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say something kind of randomish. Uh, back to like the whole like I hate when one person does one thing. What the uh, I wouldn't say I hate it, but one thing that's been like making me want to roll my eyes and just be like, look, just stop talking, is when people come to me and they're like, because you, as you guys know, if you don't know, I'm open to a bunch of stuff with my husband. I'm in a ethical non monogam non monogamous relationship with him, and so um. Like, we do anal, because he loves that shit. I'm going to give it to him, right? And so whenever people talk about that, they're like, oh, well, if a man wants to do anal, then that just means he's gay, and he just wants that. And I'm just like, dude, no, that's not the case at all. What the fuck? <laughs> what in the yeah, world? Yeah, I've, I've heard that a lot, too. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're like, if he wants anal oh, for you, he just wants a man. And I'm just like, oh, no, that's special. not it. <laughs> wanted a man he'd go fuck a man in the ass right. he wouldn't fuck a woman in the yeah. ass I'm, <laughs> I'm just Point practicing eight, right eight. now <laughs> like what the fuck <laughs> tiffany what were you trying to say uh, i just wanted to go back to what cloud was saying uh we have to remember that uh sjw means something different for uh people of different political leanings for example right. Uh, Cloud, when you when you say leftist SJWs, what I'm thinking of the people who get offended by doc humor or dirty humor or uh, like JoJo was saying, she can't make jokes about her own race or I can't make jokes uh, about, about trans race. people yeah. being trans, stuff like that. They're, they're usually woke scolds. They're uh, often gatekeepers. They push That's people I, yeah, away. Like, if yeah. there's a guy that uses the F word, and I'm not talking about fuck, but he still supports gay rights, mm. you shouldn't shun him, push him towards the right, just because he used that word, even if he identify, like, if he supports all the policies you do, or most of them. That being said, 
usually on the right, I always am careful when I say SJW in certain contexts, because a lot of people on the right, when they say SJW, they just mean pro-diversity. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, if you watch any gamer dude bro, because I make fun of them all the time on YouTube, it's one of my specialties. Whenever they mm-hmm. say, I'm sick of the woke people, it always involves someone uh, black, someone Asian, someone Spanish, someone trans, someone lesbian, someone gay, someone who's an immigrant, uh, women. It's always, like, marginalized communities or diversity, like, people complaining that there's a... They might be a black Superman, or people who complain that Jill Valentine's skirt in the Resident Evil 3 remake was now shorts. These people, uh, like, when they say woke, yeah, it's seriously, mm-hmm. when they say woke, they're, they're actually dog whistling, like, yeah, I don't like diversity. Just keep in mind the context, depending on who's saying No, it. right, which is why I tried to um, preface it by saying that it's become kind of like moments of being a meme now right of people Mm -hmm. using this stuff in the extremes and that's what i'm referring to i think you know obviously it's very important to be you know woke and being educated and understanding but i'm more so my point was people that are not in these minority groups are policing these minority groups and what they're saying guys so i think we're we're making the same point it's just we're saying oh no no i I wasn't accusing you you already said i'm you know a leftist or a liberal i can't remember what you said Mm -hmm. so i already knew what kind of sjw you meant so this wasn't directed towards you Mm -hmm. i was just saying for the audience and everyone that you know be careful sjw means different things to different people of course so to answer the question again, right? Like, how often we meet other... Because the, the follow-up was other men, right? Yes. How often we meet men? And the second you talk to them, like, you don't want to, like, carry on. Other For me, things. it's submissive men. <laughs> That's, like... And and I'm taking that question as more of a, like, Hi, you know, on the romantic side, doing? right? Like, Thanks for joining in today. Um, I don't mind... I don't mind like if you're a sub and, and there's no like romantic or sexual thing with us then cool whatever um but like if if it's for dating or anything like that like submissive men or like overly I don't know overly aggressive cocky guys like confidence is one thing like just kind of Arrogance. running around like a douchebag mm-hmm. that's a different thing I don't but, like, know what really it is mean people Arrogance just rubs me the wrong way. Right, oh, like, it's like instant it's fucking disgusting. just makes me mad. I'm like, get the fuck away from me. I think if you're know. full of yourself and then on top of that, you're stupid. Like, I'm just gonna. <laughs> oh my god, the confidence <laughs> too that they have. Like, they're so wrong, but they don't give a fuck. Yeah, because they think they're right. Because, you know, I'm, when you, I'm hot shit. <laughs> when you are arrogant like that to me, it just makes me want to prove to you more that you're not gonna have me. Yeah, <laughs> that's something that I Bro. see when I meet somebody is arrogance, um, and that's what will make me like not give a fuck if I meet you again. If we're talking about like men at bars, I don't mind the arrogant ones because they'll come over thinking they have a shot with me, and I'll just let them buy me <laughs> drinks. And then after like the third drink, and they're like, "You want to get out of here?" I'm like, "No, I'm a lesbian. I gotta go back to my girlfriend." That's right, though. That's <laughs> right, though. That's right. <laughs> Man, I can't accept the free drinks from people I can't have a conversation with. Like I start cringing and then I start shedding oh, layers yeah. of skin because like, I'm so uncomfortable and I'm cringing well, they, harder. They buy you a drink I was a bartender, so like, like you owe them sorry, something. Go ahead, Denisha. Oh no, no, no! I'm just saying I was a bartender, so I I'm used to making up fake conversations. Like I'll mm-hmm. talk to you about whatever. I'm still getting that drink. But that's when you start to giggle and act like you're drunk, and then you're in a group of girls. So then all of a sudden there's ten free shots. And then you disappear. You're like, uh, I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Why I don't buy anyone drinks except for my, exactly. except for my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. Another reason uh, I do it is not just because I like to mess with people, but because if you lead them on and they're so cocky, by the end when you drop a bomb like that, then maybe they'll be less arrogant next time. No, they, they never learn. They yeah, just they get more aggressive and rude. I, they they yeah. do get pretty pissed. Mm, they get stingy. so hurt in their ego. <laughs> I don't, I see, I don't take drinks from people at like, or I mean, I don't really go out to bars, but when I did, like, I didn't take drinks simply because there was always that underlying expectation that if someone bought you a drink, you there were going is. to, you were interested in them, which meant that if they bought you enough of those drinks that you would go home with them. And I just didn't want to have to deal with the whole like, dude, I was just taking your I drinks. I wanted a free drink. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I buy people awkward. drinks simply for playing the same music on the jukebox that I would play. 
<laughs> like I will buy somebody a drink for anything. So. So what kind of music do you listen to? <laughs> <laughs> Me, I love uh, heavy metal, death metal. Um... I mean, she's got the oh, yeah. Master of Puppets poster right behind her. I'm digging yeah. that. I'm a yeah, metal head. And death... and JoJo would get along. <laughs> Death right next to me, so. <laughs> no, I'm like EDM, fucking yeah. electronic. Uh, I like yeah. EDM, but you, you just I like don't EDM like... and electronic, too. So wait, you don't like Metallica for a second? Wait, but how do we feel about yeah. EDM pirate shanties? Eh. Oh, pirate no. shanties. Yeah, right. EDM pirate shanties. Pirate, pirate shanties, pirate shanties are interesting. I like EDM you know for like dancing at clubs, but if I'm rocking out in the car or just chilling at mm -hmm. home, I want some metal. That's just me. You know what throws me off? So back to the whole like expe expectation from getting drinks and stuff. I went mm -hmm. to a bachelorette party, mind you, she's getting married, right? And so she's walking around getting free drinks. And then these guys are like flirting and like all this stuff. Obviously has the bride to be, everything. And it's just like, so are you expecting her to just like sleep because she's gonna get married? Like, why do you flirt with the drink? Like if you're gonna get her a drink because congrats, you're getting married. But like if you're expecting something after, it's like you're really no letting yourself down. You're creepy. Oh, shame. You're creepy. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, Lucky mentioned this, and that's a good point. Make sure if you ever do get drinks in a bar, somebody, uh, like, you go up to the bar with them and have the bartender oh, yeah. hand it to you. Mm -hmm. Do not Locked let them oh, yeah. hand you a free drink. Safety first. It's a good way to a Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. What, what other, <laughs> what other signs, uh, do men give you that, uh, you're like, yeah, fuck no, I'm not like talking to you, messing with you anymore. After this. If he literally, <gasps> literally Man, refers to women as bitches and females, oh, yeah. the females. Like, oh, they're women, they're not mm. females, they're women. Now, if you're joking, I, I come across those bitch, kind of people okay. so often and like don't associate with them <laughs> don't associate with them um jojo um okay this is a good one so i matched with this dude i mean because like i said i get bored right so i matched with him on bumble Same. and um he was like oh i don't think you're gonna be as kinky like you're not as kinky as you think you are bitch we haven't even first of all we haven't even had the fucking conversation about what my kinks are you're just assuming what my kinks are and then they proceeded to talk about how they don't think that like they don't really do toys because like people that use toys are like old couples that are bored with each other and um what? like they're really good at what they do so that you don't need to bring in a toy. Oh, it's just like no no the boldness you could be like an amazing and you could go down on me and like give me an orgasm and then have you a can't great be the and, and <laughs> And you know what? You could be very, very good at the sex. But guess what? The sex. I'm still going to pull out the vibrator so that I can have an orgasm while we're having the sex. Because I'm not going to have or a it with better one penis inside me. <laughs> so yeah. it's just the idea that, like, like people, like men or, or women or anyone that's really, like, anti, like, toy and, like, exploration or they just assume that they're, you know, more adventurous than you are without even talking to you about it, automatically. I'm like, complete no interest whatsoever or or that you're a sinner because you like doing that yeah i'm not sure how many women here have gone through this but i'm pretty sure a lot of you have um just because i know pretty much every woman i know has at least had some kind of experience with this and this is a huge turn off for me uh when you're again this you have to be in person for this when you're at a bar or something and the guy's talking to you and you know he's acting nice and stuff he no <laughs> red flags but he keeps like touching you like he'll lean oh. over and rub your arm or, or your he'll, leg he'll or your he'll head. touch your knee you know what i'm talking about yeah ladies <gasps> or, your or side. He, he'll now yeah he'll I uh he'll grab your weapons. side he'll be like oh <laughs> you're really hand. Like, I'm just and he's like oh i like your face and he'll like exactly. crush That's your exactly face what i do i put my knife right there if this I'm or like, i have I my don't taser know. and i go my fucking face that you like genuinely like so i met an actor that i was genuinely attracted to i thought he was hot i'd always said he was on my list right and i met him in person and oh, that... and we we was took a picture douchey? together and he like he like grabbed my he put his arm behind me and like squeeze and it grossed me the fuck out because even though i was attracted what, for to a them, picture though for a picture like hands that's not that the bad bottom. like for a picture okay no, no, i can no, see maybe not a picture, picture honey 
down oh, here. Wait, like and booty then, grab? Like right above the booty and like squeeze me like, in. So I was like really mm. close to them. Was um, it like a. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I don't care how attracted I am to you. Like, don't just instantly don't go assume. for the. F- don't like yeah. fucking grab me. I have an mm-hmm. issue with being grabbed, let alone strangers, but even people that I know. Like, if I don't like give you permission to to enter my personal space, please don't don't do that to women, guys. It grosses mm-hmm. us out. It's really bad. I think if a celebrity did that to me, I'd be okay. Like if I was, if especially if I found them hot, I think, I, I think my body could react differently. But for sure, if it's just a random person, or if I've just been talking to you for a few days and you touch me, let I will let you know. I will grab your fucking wrist and like flick that shit away and call you out on it. I will be like, nope, shut this shit down right now. I mean, I'm not opposed to a hot girl touching me. You know, if she's like comes over and like you know grabs my waist, I'm I'm all right with that. Well, there's a huge difference between I'm okay with that too, yeah. when a woman is coming up versus like if a man's anywhere close to me, I tense up. But if like a girl's coming over and like she's like, "Hey, babe," I'm like, I relax. Same I'm problem. Not, I don't. It would be even. It's because yeah. when a man approaches you at a bar, you have to think: Does this guy just want to have sex? Is does he have like ill is intentions? Is he gonna hurt me? Uh, um, I don't know. Like this guy could be dangerous. But when a woman comes over, it's like, oh, it's a woman. I'm fine. Random women come up to me like one of the more recent times that I was at a bar. She was like holy shit, what size are your tits? They're huge. They're bigger <laughs> than mine. And she'd be like, look at that. Like, my, my purse was like, I had like a crossbody and like the rope of it was like in between my boobs. And she's like, like, just asking me questions. Like, obviously, if you were a man, I'd be like, fuck off. You're fucking weird. You know what I mean? But I... you're here laughing with a woman. And it's like, thanks. Like, yeah. you can appreciate it. When they're like, your like boobs look great. Like, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. You want to see exactly. them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Male or female? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a don't touch me unless I give you permission. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you're attractive. You could be the hottest guy ever, but don't just like come up to me and grab me because I'm going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? I think it's the same for me, men or female. Like, I'm going to react the same way. So, like, if you touch me, male or female, no. If you ask me about my bra size, male or female, I'll fucking tell you because I have no shape. <laughs> if you <laughs> ask me to grab my boobs, then I'll let you touch them. Right. Like, but don't just like, touch them. Don't just touch me, though. Yeah, regardless. Like, make an eye contact. Like, can I touch it? Yes. I just oh, want to. I can. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me my roommate one time we not, she and i were um day drinking and this like 40 year old woman came up to her and I, I was still like barely getting to know my roommate at the time so and she goes out all the time she's a regular at the bars, so she knows so many people this woman mm-hmm. came up to her and like crept up i watched her but i assumed this was someone she knew and she like you know kind of like crouched down a bit and she picked up her shirt which she was wearing it was a long shirt she was wearing as a dress this was the day after halloween she stayed at a friend's house didn't have clothes so she borrowed some clothes um and she picks it up and lifts it up so everybody can see her ass at the bar oh no, um, no, no, no and no, she no. was like and i was watching because i was assessing the situation because i have friends you know that we can do that shit around but i was like i assumed this woman knew my roommate mm-hmm. and again she was like 40 or something she was older she's wearing a short dress short dry short tight dress as well and she my roommate kind of like freaked out obviously she was like in shock and this chick was like oh i'm sorry did i make you like uncomfortable something like that and then um she's just like staring at her like what the fuck did you just do and she's like well i just wanted to see if you were wearing underwear anywhere anything underneath that and stuff like she, she's like sweetie it's so short like why aren't you wearing shorts under that and then she like kind of like crosses her arms and she's like leaning towards me and she's like as if i'm gonna back her up for some reason um and she just started kind of like victim blaming her like that's a short shirt like why aren't you wearing anything underneath and stuff like that it it was crazy she almost we almost got into a fight that night like, i was just say fists would be flying next couple of hours she got like real passive aggressive and she would like talk like try talking to me and another one of her friends and be like oh did you have you guys like met my my male friends here she was one of those pick me girls she was there with like other guys and they were all like holding her like you know with their arms around like in weird you know weird ways but eventually, she, like, I guess saw my roommate looking at her, and she was like, uh, like, oh, come here. Like, come towards me, and we'll talk about it. And my roommate was like, no. And she's like, come here. And she, like, got up, and then she got real aggressive. She was obviously trying to be, like, very controlling in that situation because my roommate didn't want to go talk to her to hear whatever the fuck she had to say. She didn't need to because she obviously, like, fucking sexually assaulted her, pretty much. She got aggressive, and then we almost, we almost fucking threw hands, like... 
That's yeah. when you... Ghetto Turtle comes out. Fuck yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> if you're exposing turtle, like someone's turtle naked turtle body to an entire bar, <laughs> that's <laughs> grounds for violence there. Exactly. We're, we're actually having, like in chat, we were having a conversation. I think actually this is important to, to mention because um, a few people uh, have spoken about it is um, it's, it's also not okay for us, like women, to grab on men no permission i'm not touching um, anybody it <laughs> happens a lot and mm-hmm. and what ends up happening is that if a man says something about it we make them feel bad and i i, I use the general we not the mm-hmm. the individual we uh what are you gay or, or don't you like me or all of these things and then so we become the aggressors and it it so men report it which is why men report assaults a lot less than women do right like right. because you make them feel bad so i feel like it's it's we need to be responsible as women as well and and not perpetuate the same things that we're not okay with being done to us not doing them to others that goes for butt grabs I... too women like grabbing yeah. asses yeah. and men do not like that shit mm-hmm. what men. yeah ass grabbing yeah it's crazy for sale but some men don't like having their ass grabbed it's weird so i've weird. i've had to tell people like uh, yeah stop like yeah you have pinching my ass that's <laughs> that's weird like i i barely know you can you not pinch my ass and then like they did it later and i was like i had to like turn around and be like do not fucking grab my ass again i like i will kick you out of here quicker than shit like don't do that shit see i have it's issues, fucking rude like separating my boundaries with my friends my friends people not randos my friends right. but like i'm the type of person if you bend over and if i know you know you i'm gonna smack the shit out of your ass not because <laughs> it's like it's hot just because it's there and i'm just like fuck yeah i'm just like hey, you know what i like to do if you don't like grow up your I, friends are you really friends yeah exactly I like to move <laughs> people in the in the poop poop um so like, if you bend over i'll literally walk over and go poop <laughs> in the butthole <laughs> But you know I mean, what? If I That's know it. You, I'm done. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's there, there, there's a big difference between being close friends with somebody and knowing what your boundaries are and yeah. complete strangers, right? Oh, you wouldn't walk up to like Bob at the grocery store and be like, "Boop." Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Bob's kind of sick, though. <laughs> While he's bagging yeah. your groceries. <laughs> don't bend over in front of me because I'm gonna go boop. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, um that's the red one so okay. lucky lucky had mentioned in in uh chat earlier hold on where's it at uh Pro so ba- basically the the topic of the convo was uh if so there's there's a difference for a lot of people it, it might not be for the people on the on the panel or the show right now but like there's a difference if you notice when you go out to bars and all these places that kind of stuff if it's somebody attractive that the person is into and they're touching them it's perfectly fine if it's someone they're unattracted to or they find creepy it's not fine i don't think that's acceptable because it sets a shitty example for the ones you don't want touching you yeah no please no like i i said in the chat i was like even if chris evans captain america Oof, chris evans. was to That's come up to me ass. and touch me America's like i'm performing i'll be like yo dude i'll like I'll, I'll punch you in the face right now back up <laughs> like no and i've had that happen to me there was this person that i worked with who i thought was the finest fucking man and then turns out he's a little bit pervy and i was completely Ooh. fucking turned off so no it does not for me at least it does not matter how attractive you are if i don't want that shit i don't want that shit same for me same with, with me. like arrogance and if you're dumb like you could be the hottest fucking guy ever once i find out you're an asshole or you're dumb it like just goes mm. maybe i feel so, less less upset being randomly touched by women because they're women themselves and i i'm not like feeling threatened at all and more often than not they they don't mean it in like a you know vicious way but still i guess it would be a case by case basis for me um Turtle or Nico? I don't, I don't know which one had their hand up first. Uh, Turtle, go ahead. Uh, so I have a real story, and then I'm going to just compare it. So oh. real life story, uh, in college, we had this pool table, and I, I always used to throw my backpack underneath the pool table. And then obviously when I had to go to class, I would have to get it out. So I bent over to get it out, and this one guy, not attracted to him, nothing, and he just straight came up and just smacked the shit out of my ass. First of all, oh, you don't fucking no. know 
the old me. Okay, so the old me came out of me, and I straight just in got real Hispanic quick, yes, didn't you? <laughs> in sync, I grabbed him by his throat and fucking pinned him against the wall. And I told him straight out, I said, "Don't you ever fucking touch me that way." Like, no, I don't know who you think you are, but no, hell no, I'll shut that shit. And I can guarantee you, like. If the hottest celebrity out there just randomly smacked my ass in the middle of the dance floor, I'm going to turn around and be like, look, you're hot, but don't touch me that way. Like, no, 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 no. no. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I have to agree with a lot of everyone, what everyone's saying. Don't touch me. <laughs> I may be poor, but bro or woman, please <laughs> do not. I will use my elbow and it'll be in so many orphans, it's not even funny. Um, it's just a side note. Chris Pratt lost a lot of his uh, attractiveness, even though I don't like guys that can admit when they're handsome, because it turns out he's part of a giant mega church that is re re I can't say it with my accent vehemently. Fuck. Yeah, they, they they don't like gay people. They're very anti LGBTQ and they donate to anti LGBTQ causes. And Chris Pratt defends them constantly. So knowing that he's like that, it, he loses sex appeal for me. No. I was going to say, um, to just finish up the point before we close out, because we're getting around, it's 930. Yeah. Um, I did hear a couple times that, that one of the distinctions that people made was, um, I don't feel threatened by women and I, I feel threatened by men. Like for me, it has, it actually has nothing to do with that because I generally don't feel threatened by men. I do, if I'm, a, if, if it's a group of men and I'm on my own, um, it depends on the situation, right? It's circumstantial. Um, I hang out with guys all the time and I don't feel threatened. Um, but I feel like, uh, women, we can be just as bad. Um, it's just not, not as common or not as reported or it, you know, I mean, women do are the aggressors sometimes. So, so my standpoint isn't because of a fear of something happening. It's mostly just because I value my, my personal space and my autonomy of my body. And I just don't like people violating that. Like, I don't care who you are, what you look like, what you do. Like, don't just do that to anybody, regardless of, of what it might be. I don't think it's right for anyone to think it's okay to touch someone without consent. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. For me as well. Consent is, is the big thing. Uh, but for sale, I, I pass the torch on to you. So we can All right. Um, Klinger, real quick. Uh, do you, are, are, are the toys released yet? Like, do you have a website to purchase them yet? Or is it still in development working on releasing them? We're, uh, we're about to release the 2.0. So that's shipping Ooh. in May. Yeah. Okay. May All right. Nice. Called I Lioness, just so linked her Google. site into chat. Oh, thank oh, you, JoJo. Yeah, that's what I was just going to ask for. Do you get a link for it? So thank you. So there's the link for that toy um it, that's the one that shows you through the app right uh your uh pelvic floor contractions and stuff during orgasm is that correct basically yeah you can um yeah. probably best to check out um anna's anna's tiktok to get a sense yeah. of it so she's uh <laughs> anna the average over there Yep, she does a really good job breaking it down, explaining it, showing the test results, and breaking that out as well. Uh, it's really Lots good. You should definitely check it out. <laughs> yep, exactly. So check out that link. Um, if if you buy the toy and try it out, let me let me know what you think. Let us know here in the community what you think. I'll send um, you a video for sale. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> um. We'll do outros here, and then uh, for those that want to hang out a little bit, continue the conversation, we literally only covered, like, five of the questions out of the 20 That's I had. That's what happened last time. <laughs> right? But it was a really good conversation, really good combos. Um, all right, so for those that don't know, I stream Wednesday through Saturday, or Wednesday through Friday. Wednesdays are variety days, variety games. Uh, right now I'm on a Valheim kick, uh, which is a really good survival S type game that you can play with the community and stuff uh thursdays i do the show every thursday different themes every single week i'm always looking for new faces or returning faces to have on uh, if you know anyone that would be a good fit for it or you would like to be back on i am always needing help uh partly because like uh you well having people participate helps show that like hey this is 
normal like this is fucking normal adult conversation there's nothing weird about it we all have sex we all enjoy sex it's just part of the human experience um so i appreciate that uh and then on fridays i do multiplayer games and uh memes and stuff to end the night with and then you can find me on tiktok a lot too oh uh, hello everybody uh good night and that's it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Jojo <laughs> West, Jojo West model, Instagram and Twitter. I don't have a stream schedule right now. I'm getting myself sorted. Um, I, if you ever have any questions, kink, sex toys, uh, non-monogamy, uh, psychology, whatever you want to talk about, um, or vent or whatever, I'm always available. Uh, I am for sales community manager as well. So like, if you guys ever have any questions or concerns or things like that, you are always welcome to reach out. Um, I think that's it, right? Yeah. Oh, you can. Yep. Yes, you can find me on the socials. I don't really do the TikToks because you know I'm I'm okay, boomer. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but uh, I I do send random videos to people that are on my TikTok. So if you want random videos, you can follow me on TikTok too. There you go. Hey, so yeah, I'm X Zero Thirteen. Um, I usually stream Monday and Friday variety streamer i do mental health awareness because i forgot to mention i am a social worker in training so i do have some background or resources if people want information regarding mental health topics it's kind of what i do but yeah thanks for having me on yeah thanks for being on nico hi uh nico can fox uh, i forgot to say it earlier but i am a variety streamer you can find me on instagram here on twitch uh nico can fox uh, down there and then on twitter i have two x's instead of one but yeah <laughs> um, thank you for having me it was a lot yeah, of fun thank you. thank you for being on appreciate you tiffany thanks for having me on for sale uh, i'd love to come back sometime uh, i had a good time uh, but my only complaint is that because i did this panel i wasn't able to watch Zack snyder's justice league but it's okay it'll be there tomorrow <laughs> I'm just messing around. This is way more fun. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I just want to tell everyone that my Twitter is Tiffany Star XXX. My YouTube is Tiffany Star, and my Twitch is right here XXX Tiffany underscore Star XXX. On my YouTube, it's mostly politics. Sometimes I do gaming stuff, but it's mostly politics. Uh, on my Twitch. It's a lot of panels like this and video games. Right now I'm going through The Messenger. I just beat Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. I'm going to do the sequel. And I got the Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, which is five games I can play. My Twitter is just me posting politics and sometimes nudes. So be aware that you might open it up and be like, oopsie, I'm Spread Eagle or, you know, something like that. Uh, good times. It was a pleasure to meet all the panelists here. I enjoyed everyone. Yeah, nice meeting you too. Uh, Denny. Uh, hello again. My name is Denisha. I hate you, but feel free to call me Denny. I'm a variety streamer on Twitch. I do not do PvP. I'm not a competitive player. However, like I play literally every game. So right now I'm playing Wolfenstein. So if you're into RPG shooters and horror and retro, that's usually what I do. Um, I'm also a writer. I write dark fantasy novels. I also will write a short story for you. A short dark fantasy uh, or uh, horror fantasy story for you, if you can uh, redeem those points in my chat. Uh, I have a website, which I can, mm -hmm. you know, do later, but I am releasing a book this year. It's called Apotheosis Sacrifices. So if anybody has any questions about that, you know, feel free to let me know. This was amazing. I love talking about stuff like this. So if for sale yeah, would like yeah. to have me on again, I would gladly be here. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun. And like I said, uh, streamer and horror dark fantasy writer. So that's me, Denny Denisha. Hell yeah. Well, thank you for being on. Alex? Um, I'm Alex. My All my social medias are Alexandra Rose, the same thing on my little thing. Um, I do variety games, mostly horror, COD, um, just chatting. I dabble in a little of everything. I'm super open minded. <laughs> so. You can talk to me about everything in case anybody... I'm a huge mental health advocate and LGBTQ and all that stuff, so give me a check out and stuff. And I love, <laughs> I loved being here. All the people here were lovely, and I'm going to follow all you guys, and I hope to be on here again. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for being on. Uh, Liz, or this is Klinger? Yeah, so, yeah, L's on Twitch. Um, this is Klinger everywhere else. 
Uh, I'm the one who makes the Lioness smart vibrator. So most of the time mm -hmm. I'm either working on that or um, I I might get more into streaming. Uh, there's been there's been a couple things in my life that I've that have kept me from playing video games as much. But the, probably the closest thing I've been doing to video games recently is what I like to call Harvest Moon in real life, which is uh, I have a whole bunch. Oh my god, I I might even do some streaming on this, but I have like a blue java banana tree in my kitchen that what? i'm building <laughs> yeah look oh, it up it tastes like ice cream oh no i gotta look this wow. up yeah yeah and it's like <laughs> maybe like uh seven feet high in my kitchen i need to move it out at some point so there's there's a bunch of stuff that i've been growing um that i've gotten into recently and um yeah i might do some content on that too who knows uh, but yeah that's um you can find me talking about that stuff um sex stuff my rabbits uh, in the other room. They're very cute. Um, and oh. any of those socials. Yeah, they're great. Hell yeah. Well, thank you for being on. I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. Make, yeah. Make sure you all go check out the website, uh, lioness.io. Hi, I'm Cloud Freckles, which you can find Cloud Freckles on Twitter. I'm not streaming at the moment until I can get a grasp on finishing school. And I had a really fun time being on again. Yeah, thank you for being on. Appreciate mm -hmm. you. Uh, turtle. Hey everybody, and again, for so I'm so sorry I was like late. I don't okay. really don't do that. I uh, I want to be on the panel as long as for is not tired of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than that, I'm big time turtle on Twitch, big time turtle on TikTok. Uh, I am a variety streamer. I mostly majority play Dead by Daylight. Love that shit. Uh, but I do play Fall Guys. I want to play some Jackbox and get all this stuff going. So yeah, come check me out. I do. Uh, Thursday's panel, Friday, Saturday is my gaming time. Well, thank you all for being on. Uh, it was a good conversation. Bye. 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 Bye.